Tucker in 22 minutes, uh, Glen Allen in 24 minutes on towards Piney Grove in just shy of 30 minutes. Uh, again, this storm system is moving very quickly ahead of where we would see that area of rotation, likely getting some very strong winds right now. Moving out of Lamar County, moving into southwestern Marion County and the northwestern part of Fayette County at this time. This, uh, this storm system right now is producing some light rain towards Brilliant right along Interstate 22. If you do have any plans that bring you along Interstate 22 within the next 15 to 20 minutes, I would halt those plans. This storm system will cross right over Interstate 22 between Guin, Winfield, and Brilliant. So again, stay off Interstate 22 if at all possible, and especially any large trucks right now. The winds are going to be howling out ahead of this, and that could be very dangerous for us here. Uh, storm tracks are on, and these storm tracks are bringing this storm off to the north and to the east. Even though northern Fayette County, you are in this warning box. I would go ahead and get into your safe place right now, but it looks like the strength of this storm is really going to be right over the Tri-County area, right where Lamar, Marion, and Fayette County meet. I think this track's going to bring this right through Beaverton right now. Very heavy rainfall currently, and that heavy rainfall is right along Highway 278. 278 brings you through Beaverton over towards Guin, and then on through Winfield over towards Double Springs. Uh, over towards Moscow, that's where we're seeing that area where we could be looking at some rotation right now. Very heavy rainfall associated with this. Look at that bright green on the screen, and we can actually measure those wind speeds with some of our in-house products. And so using this, we're, we're measuring those wind speeds lofted just slightly above the surface, anywhere between 65 to 70. 75 miles per hour. And you can see this little notch feature on the screen here on our Velocity product. And uh, if we if we use our barren button, we can see, this is what we look at to see the strength of those winds. So anytime, we're, anytime that we see those kind of deeper reds on the screen, we can actually track some of the, the wind speeds there. Right now, very strong winds between Beaverton and Mansfield. This is where those winds are really howling, likely to be getting a little bit of rotation just south of Highway 278 west of Beaverton. So that's going to be in eastern Lamar County. And this is tracking off to the east right now, and it's going to be heading right towards the city of Guin, down towards Wayside, really moving right over again to kind of the Tri-County area where Lamar County, Marion County, and Fayette County all meet. But those winds, the field of which those winds will cover will be all the way from Wayside up through Guin. Regardless of the rotation, these wind speeds are upwards of, like, like we mentioned, 70 to 100 miles per hour, or, uh, miles per hour, and those are lofted just slightly, so we are going to be monitoring that very closely here as we move through the afternoon. Um, right now, we are looking at this heavy, heavy rain band. We are starting to see some rotation right near, basically east of Moscow, so northeast of Moscow. We can see just a little curvature there. A lot of rain wrapping around this particular storm system today. Along the leading edge, we're getting a lot of wind out of this, too. So right now, if you're joining us, we have a new tornado tornado warning that was just issued and zooming out we can see a bit better of the picture there and this includes Lamar County all the way through Marion County down through uh, portions of North West Fayette County, including the city of Bobo and Baysmore. And this is for now west and south of Interstate 22. But this polygon does include Interstate 22 on the far eastern edge of this. So if you're along Interstate 22 between Brilliant Rock City down towards Guin, uh, go ahead and take action, get to your safe place, and make sure that we're trying to stay off of the interstate at this time. Not only is it because of the tornado risk, but also the intense rainfall that we're about to encounter. It's going to be very dangerous on the roadways, very limited visibility with some of this rain as well. This is our severe wind tracker, and you can see where we have those deep reds on your screen, that color of maroon. That's going to be on the strong scale. So looking at our legend there, we can see where we're looking at those weaker winds. They're still severe, but they're on the weaker side. Still, uh, still going to be very intense, but they get stronger as we start to move into this red. And then if we start to see some yellow popping up, that would be the extreme wind. And now we're starting to get a little curvature. When this severe wind profile starts to look more like an S, when it starts to get a little curvature in it, that's what indicates to us as the meteorologist that there is rotation with this storm. Right now it's elongated just a bit. Very 
strong winds. Again, 70, 80 mile per hour winds are possible along this leading edge. That's where we're seeing this elongation. But we are seeing that curvature, and this make, leads me to believe that there is some rotation. Uh, for now, it doesn't appear as though we have confirmation that there is anything on the ground. We have to get ground truth to say that. And looking at our debris indicator, not noticing anything here with our debris indicator that would in indicate anything being lofted into the air. We look at our debris indicator. Anytime we start to see these yellows turn to green and then blue, that would indicate for us that there are objects being lofted and that it, that's just another indicator for us that the rotation is on the ground. So for now, not really seeing anything. There's a couple of areas, but um, I, I don't think that they're necessarily directly associated with this storm. But again, there's just a lot of wind, and so even the wind can pick up and loft things. So very heavy rainfall currently along Highway 278 between Beaverton and Guin at this time, and that's going to be intense right over Beaverton. Very limited visibility. We're also tracking that tornado warning. It looks like they're trimming off the back edge. So if you are in Moscow, Seligent, Pine Springs, you're clear now. Still getting a whole lot of rainfall, but you are clear. So the western side of Lamar County is cleared from this warning. That warning is going to continue to the east, and we'll continue tracking that towards Interstate 22. We've got some new information coming in. Um, we'll send it over to Alex in the Weather Center. Uh, yeah, Ashley, we've got a new tornado warning that's now in effect for Pickens County. This is a storm that is coming out of Noxby County, Mississippi right now. This is going to include Reform, Gordo, Carrollton. Uh, it's going to include Pickensville. This includes the Bevel Lock and Dam. This warning just coming in now. This goes until 415 this afternoon. The area of circulation is going to be still back into Mississippi at this point. So I'll go ahead and circle this for you. Right here, this is east of Macon, Mississippi, right now near Prairie Point, and that's going to continue to lift north and east. I'll get a storm track on this for you. That's your circulation. That's going to be lifting northeast at about 45 miles an hour. This is going to be at the Bevel Lock and Dam or close to it by in about nine minutes. Pickensville, 12 minutes. McMullen, 14 minutes. Beavertown, 14 minutes. Carrollton, this is probably about 20 to 25 minutes out. So if you're watching us in Pickens County now, call to action, get in your tornado safe place. This rotation, again, near Prairie Point, east of Macon, in Noxaby County, Mississippi. This is north of Mississippi Highway 14. And Alabama Highway 32, and this is going to be approaching Pickensville and the Lock and Dam very soon. So if you're watching us in Western Pickens County, you need to get in a safe place. So actually, now two storms that we're working here: this tornado warning and the the storm that has a tornado warning it now in Lamar County, Marion, and Fayette counties. Ashley. Thanks, Alex. Yeah, we're uh, starting in, uh, into our active afternoon of weather. This is the exact event that we've been preparing y'all for most of the week. And overnight tonight, uh, through the evening hours tonight, we'll continue tracking this as this moves through west, central, and then on into east Alabama. So we'll be watching this very closely, continuing to monitor this situation. We have team coverage here today. Storm Team Meteorologist Alex Puckett, along with Storm Team Meteorologist Dave Nuffsbaum. We'll send it over to Dave right now with a deeper look at the storm. You can see uh, over on in toward the area there by uh, still watching there up toward Reform Gordo along the Highway 82 corridor, uh, keeping an eye on that storm as it continues to move on into the area. Uh, but still going to be watching to see how this storm does work its way through the Guin area there, and it continues to move in. We haven't seen a debris uh, indication of it yet, which is some good news. But that's definitely something we'll be watching to see how this does evolve into something. There's definitely a lot of heavy rain with this, that's for sure, and strong winds. Now, uh, while there may not be a tornado, we can still see some winds causing damage, not only just from the thunderstorm, but it's been windy all day today, and that's causing some problems out there as well, too. So uh, we need to definitely keep that in mind as we go forward here and watch to see how this storm continues to evolve. Moving on in throughout uh, the rest of the afternoon hours here. Uh, currently, it is 3:33. The warning does go to 4 o'clock this afternoon. So we're going to still watch to see how this does play out moving forward on in through the rest of the afternoon hours here. So as that continues to work its way across the region, there we're going to still watching to see uh, other storms continue to build in from the west. We highlighted earlier that western part of Alabama was the region we were going to see that threat for the best threat, if you will, for some tornadoes out there, and that's indeed what we're still watching to see. Uh, uh, how this moves through. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit here and kind of show you what's going on. So we have the two tornado warnings, uh, the one up here to the north and another one down to the south for Pickens County as well. That was the storm we were watching with the tornado warning uh, coming out of parts of uh, uh, 
Knoxaby and, and uh, into Kemper County there in Mississippi is that has worked its way on in. So the area that has the best energy, if you will, for severe weather uh, was part of western Alabama, and that's where our two warnings currently are located at this time. So let's go ahead and zoom in on the one down here to the south, and you can see if right over top of Pickensville area, so this is where we'll be watching. That storm near Aubrey coming out of Mississippi, heading on into parts there of the Pickens County area. So if you're watching this Pickensville, Beavertown, Saps area, Archer, Carrollton itself up toward a reform in the Gordo area. Area. Uh, that's the storm. That's the one we're closely watching as we go forward here with that rotation just about here on the state line. Coming on in and it'll continue on that track off to the northeast. And this one's moving here. I'll put a little track on it right now, about 45 miles per hour. So as that moves up, it's moving a pretty quick pace there, but takes it to the Beavertown area there. You see by 8 o'clock uh, over toward Beasley, around 15 minutes, I should say, 8 minutes in Beaverton. Uh, Carrollton, about 17 minutes uh, over toward Beards Mill, 22 minutes. Bostick, 28. Reform, 28 minutes. So take shelter now. Lowest level of your home. Away from windows, interior room or closet, bathroom, basement would be a great place to go if you have that. Get in the one corner uh, away from, uh, again, the center part of the basement here with the storm as it continues to move in. Now, we haven't seen anything with this storm that does indicate. We have any debris tied in with it yet. If there is something possibly kind of trying to develop just crossing over, not too far away from the Tom Bigby River there in the state line, that's the area we're watching here. Uh, hard to tell, though. Uh, it's uh, not kind of far enough away from the radar. We're not seeing anything at this point, which is good news, uh, but definitely going to continue watching that one there. You can see kind of a inflow notch as the storm kind of moves in and crosses into the state line here, uh, right on the Mississippi-Alabama line with that storm there. So it's trying to get better organized. It is moving to an area that has not seen much in the way of rain at all today. Also, it's warm. It's more humid down there than it is here in Birmingham. Temperatures are near 80 degrees down here, uh, at least what we've seen down toward uh, farther south as you go south. South of the uh, Tuscaloosa area. So, with that in mind, that's fuel for those thunderstorms, and I'll continue helping to fuel those storms up a little bit. Let's kind of zoom back out again and go to that northern storm we were tracking earlier. Uh, I don't want to forget about all of you up there. Uh, this storm here, again, still looking a uh, fairly intense type storm as we continue to watch it here. Uh, still has a chance of possibly producing a tornado at this point. You can see that rotation. Not near as intense as it once was. That's some good news, folks. Uh, right near the Gouin areas where we're watching here, that circulation kind of becoming a little bit broader. Again, earlier it was fairly intense. I kind of put a loop on it here, and as it continues to build in from the way uh, off to the south there, you can see kind of building just into the region there. It comes on in and eventually moves on in toward Beaverton in the Gouin area. And that's where, again, we are seeing that rotation, what's left of it, right in this location here. So we'll go ahead and track this one here. This one also still moving at about, say, 45 miles per hour as well at this time. And you can see Gouin right basically on top of you right now. New Hope, about five minutes. Uh, Tucker, about eight minutes. Brilliant, around 12. Dogtown, around 22 minutes. Over toward Glen Mary, about 24 minutes. So we're still watching all this. Uh, but right now, let's go ahead back over toward Alex with some more information. Or Art, I'm sorry, Art, you have some more information. Uh, all right, Dave, thank you very much. Our storm team weather team is obviously very busy as we've got a tornado warning, but we want to get to Winfield Mayor Randy Price. He's joining us on the phone now. Uh, Mr. Price, can you hear me, sir? Yes, sir. Uh, tell me what the situation is there. I know you guys have been through this before, but what's the situation this afternoon as we're dealing with this tornado warning? Well, all the, all the local banks went ahead and shut down about 2 o'clock. They let school out here, you know, at 12 o'clock. Uh, but basically all we've had so far is just a lot of wind. It's been windy all morning. Uh, we're getting a little bit more gust to the wind now than what we had. And, uh, of course, rain's mixed with it. But other than that, we're, we haven't seen any kind of, you know, uh, high, high winds with damage or anything yet. So windy and rainy there, but certainly this comes on the heels of what you dealt with back in December. Take us back to what that was like for you because you guys suffered some damage back in that time. Yeah, the, you talking about the last storm that come through? Yes, sir, Mayor. Yeah, yeah, the wind, that's what I've been saying all day. The wind's actually been higher, uh, quicker today than it was then. Uh, we didn't really have a whole lot of wind prior to that uh, last storm that come in until it come in. You know, it's just kind of, they predicted when it would come in, and it come in at that time, and it was gone. The wind was gone. And there wasn't no wind before, but we've got, we've had wind here all morning and all day, and it, it, it's actually been a cooler wind, so I thought that might help matter some, but, but uh, it's, it's nothing like it was the last time. It just kind of come in and left the last time when it's kind of been like carrying on windy all morning. And I know our meteorologists are listening in to you as you're talking about 
how you've been dealing with the winds all day today, quite different from what it was back in December for you. And things are already starting to shut down there, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, businesses, everybody's uh, taking, you know, uh, uh, good caution and going ahead and letting employees and stuff go home uh, to be in a safe place. And, of course, the school, like I said, let out at 12. I think everybody's a little more, you know, alert about it uh, this time. Maybe the last time was kind of like a warning to be prepared when the warnings go out. And we're talking with Winfield Mayor Randy Price right now, says he's been dealing with a lot of wind throughout the day. What's your message to your residents, Mayor, Mayor Price? Uh, say that again? What is your message to your, your, your residents right now as you're dealing with the high winds? And you said more wind than you dealt with back in December when that EF1 tornado came through the area. My message to them would, you know, listen to the news and pay attention to the warnings that go out. Uh, because y'all have got real accurate with uh, predictions of what's going on. You're watching it close to the radar and different things. And my my message to them is to do like I did last time, take shelter. You know, prior when you get a warning, go ahead and take shelter and uh, stay there until the warning is, is lifted. Well, that's Winfield Mayor Randy Price advising residents in his city to go ahead and take shelter there and stay in place. Our meteorologists, of course, tracking the storm as it moves through the area, and they've been listening to Mayor Price as he's talked about those winds, and I'm going to get them to go ahead and weigh in on exactly what that seems to indicate to them as he's been talking about the wind so far. Is it, um, that our chief meteorologist Ashley Gann is here along with Dave Nussbaum and, and one of you, Dave, if you would, if, there's Ashley there. Yeah. Ashley, the mayor there, Randy Price, says they're dealing with more wind this time around. They weren't dealing with that before when the tornado hit back in December. That's right. And one of the reasons why is preceding this, we already had a wind advisory in place. So winds today were between 20 to 25 miles per hour sustained through much of the morning and early afternoon. Winds gusting up to 40 miles per hour at times. And this is called the wind gradient. So it's the difference basically between point A and point B. You have a steep stack of wind and it's creating that force of wind that we felt a lot earlier today. That is not necessarily directly associated with the line of thunderstorms that's moving through currently. But it has been a breezy, breezy morning and early afternoon, and now it's the onset of those thunderstorms. I do want to bring your attention back to Marion County because they have just canceled the tornado warning that was moving out of Lamar County and crossing over towards Guin, right along Interstate 22 and Brilliant, and that is now canceled. Still going to have some howling winds and some very heavy rainfall, but we're going to re relocate our attention down towards Pickens County right now because this is where we're tracking uh, the better chance of a rotating storm. Starting to see a little bit more uh, of a curvature and kind of that classic hook echo there on the backside of this storm between Aliceville and Carrollton right now. And that's where we're really going to see most of this tracking. Now, Aliceville, you're just south of the polygon, so you're safe, but I would still stay in a safe place because you could still be getting quite a bit of wind out of this system currently. So let's, uh, I'll take, I'll zoom in here just a little bit so we can get a little bit better perspective um, on where we're tracking this particular storm system this afternoon. So right now we're looking at, again, Carrollton to reform right along Highway 82 over towards Gordo. You need to go ahead and get into your safe place right now. It looks like this is a new warning that just popped back up into Mississippi. So we'll be monitoring that um, as we move through. So here's where we're looking at this. Let me go ahead and show you where we are tracking not only our radar, but our velocity product here. This is actually a live look right now in Gordo. That's a very well-defined couplet here. So that, that's where we're tracking this storm. This is between Pickensville and Beasley, just outside of Cunningham. So if you're from Beasley to Pickensville, go ahead and get into your safe place. Carrollton, get into your safe place. And again, from reform, reform to Gordo, get into a safe structure. Put as many walls between you and the outside as possible. If you're in a mobile home, try to get to a stick-built home or try to get to a place of business, a gas station, a convenience store. Want to make sure that you're in a sturdy structure that has a foundation affixed to the ground. Uh, right now, this storm system is moving off to the north, northeast at roughly 40 miles per hour. And again, that's our live look from our storm team tower cam in Gordo. You can see how the sky is growing increasingly ominous there. Rainfall is really going to start picking up a bit in tempo within the next five to 10 minutes as this storm races in through there. All right, I'm going to zoom in here because this is actually much better perspective here on our uh, velocity product. You can see where those greens and reds come together. I, 
I, by looking at this just by, uh, by the eye, I, I would be pretty um, confident to say that there may be a, a bit of a tornado uh, on the ground. Again, we haven't had any confirmation just yet. So um, let me go back to our radar product here um, as, we, as we're tracking this. So we're looking at our storm velocity product uh, currently, and it uh, looks like we're getting some, some uh, pixels that are spreading out on our screen just a bit. We might need to look into that just a moment. So we'll, we'll go back to our, our radar here very quickly. So uh, let, let's reassess. I might send it over to uh, either Alex. Oh, there's our Birmingham radar right now. So we can look into this really quickly, and if we need to, we can toss it over. So right now, here, this is a look from our Birmingham radar, but we'll switch that back to our uh, site. This is our site in uh, East Mississippi, so near Columbus, so it's much closer to the radar site right now. And as, again, we kind of track that velocity. Um, maybe if it's showing up on somebody else's uh, computer, let me know, and I can toss it over to either Dave or Alex as we're tracking this. This is our look at our range. So you're seeing that classic hook echo there as we zoom into this. This is where we're going to see that notching right over Beaver Town, and this is where we're seeing some heavy rain wrapping around the backside. So Pickensville, this is likely where we would see that area of rotation right now. So if I draw this on your screen for you, we can see this is where we would see that rotation right over Beaver Town, and then that's going to move right up through Saps, and then just uh, right over Carrollton. So if you're anywhere from Carrollton to Beasley right now, from Carrollton over towards Beasley, Lois Springs, you're included in that. This is going to be making its way right over you. Even Dilbert, get into your safe place right now. Remember, put as many walls between you and the outside as possible. This is really starting to tighten up at this time, so we're going to be monitoring this very closely as it continues its track off to the northeast. This is going to be along Highway 86. It's running parallel to Highway 86. The actual area of rotation where there would be a tornado is staying just slightly south of Highway 86 right now, and it looks like we, and we might be getting some erroneous returns on our um, actual velocity product right now, so we'll, we'll kind of stick here with our um, radar, but I do want to track this. So let me zoom back out for you because I do want to track this storm system uh, as it's continuing its move off to the south, uh, or excuse me, as it's off to its north and to the east. So right now, this is where we're tracking this rotation. So it's right over Beaverton and then it's wrapping back around. So I'm kind of drawing an arrow on your map here, and then this will be traveling northeast at this time towards Carrollton. So it's going to be traveling just south of Highway 86. Let me clear out some of those drawings for us, and then we can get a little bit better view here as we zoom out. There's a, a little bit better picture of the polygon as it does extend across Pickens County, right along Highway 82 from Reform to Gordo, and we'll keep our Storm Team Tower Cam up there. We do have a kind of a bird's eye view there, and that's right on Highway 82, and that's going to be kind of looking um, due west at this point, north northwest. So we will be able to see that storm approaching. And one thing that we're going to notice very soon on our Gordo Tower Cam, two things in particular. One, this lower level jet. Those clouds are racing kind of at the lower level. We've got very fierce winds just right above us, really. And then and on top of that, you're going to see that rain picking up very quickly as heavy rainfalls already started to move into reform. It's just a matter of moments before it reaches into Gordo at this time. So that's something else that we're monitoring very closely as we look at this. As far as lightning goes right now, uh, not seeing a, a great deal of lightning, but that doesn't mean that... Uh, a lot of times we'll track that lightning, and so right now we're getting about uh, only about nine lightning strikes. What we'll do is we'll track that lightning as far as um, it goes when we start to see the lightning strikes picking up. That generally tends to mean that the, the storm is intensifying just a bit, so that's something that we will keep a watchful eye on here. All right, let's look at just a couple of our other products right now. Again, I want to track this storm system across this polygon right now as it's moving into Carrollton. It's moving right over Carrollton, and it looks like it's at this point, it's starting to broaden out ever so slightly. Carrollton, Bostic, and Gordo, it, you're, you're going to be under the impact. Carrollton, right now, you should be in your safe place. Bostic and Gordo, you have about 12 to 15 minutes before this reaches you, about 10 minutes before it reaches reform. So again, get into your safe place. This is very important for everyone. And remember, go over what that is. St uh, put as many walls between you and the outside as possible. Go to that interior room on the lowest level of your house. Be sure to stay away from windows. It's very important that we want to try to get into a sturdier structure.
infrastructure. So if you do live in a mobile home, this is a time to um, you know, try to get to a, a neighbor's house that has a, a stick-built house. That's very important right now. All right, these last couple of scans um, have actually shown a little bit less definition there on that little hook feature on the back side. It does not in any way eliminate that that's our threat, but we will continue monitoring this because we are getting some very strong winds picking up on our some of our products. So from Carrollton down towards Beasley right now, we're looking at those wind speeds anywhere between maybe 60 to 70 miles per hour. I know just a couple of thousand feet above us, we are tracking even greater wind speeds right now. Um, one thing that I can uh, quickly do, I, I want to slice through the storm because I want to show you kind of the height of these storms, what we're looking at right here. So right now, this is what the storm looks like as we kind of take a look on the um, kind of inside of the storm. And actually, it's not our, our volume product is not working right now. So we'll we'll take a look at, back at that in just a, in just a moment there. So let's go back uh, to our 3D radar here. So where you see that red box on your screen, that would be our tornado warning that we're tracking right now in Pickens County, and that particular tornado warning is producing uh, not only an area of rotation in the upper levels of the atmosphere right now, but it's also producing some significant rainfall. Uh, where is our weather alert unit right now? Okay, so our storm team, our, excuse me, uh, storm team meteorologist Michael Haynes is on Interstate 22 just outside of Jasper. Probably a very safe place for them to be right now, but in that position, they can actually look at the storm system as it's approaching as well. So we'll make sure that they stay in a safe spot there. And there's our storm team meteorologist Michael Haynes that you just saw on the screen for just a moment. So we will uh, go back over to them in just a minute, kind of just get an idea of what they're seeing along I-22 because the same storm system that's moving through. Marion County, as I mentioned, moving over Interstate 22, a little north of where Michael is right now. Uh, but all of this rain is heading towards that I-22 corridor. Right now, the heaviest rain is moving over uh, Highway 82 from Reform to Gordo back towards Carrollton. It does look like we're starting to really lose a little bit of that rotation on the backside of this storm system right now. Something that we're monitoring very closely, but still some very strong winds are associated with this. So as we look at our tracker, here, I want to show you our shear rate. This is where we're looking at that little S. Remember when I told you whenever we look at our severe wind product and we see some very uh, deep reds, but it starts to make that little curvature, that would be an indicator that there is possibly some uh, tornado on the ground. There's definitely some rotation in the atmosphere. So our shear rate product indicating some very intense wind right now. Again, this is from Carlos, Carrollton, Lewis Spring, down towards Be uh, Beasley and Dilburg, right along Highway 17. And this is going to be making its way towards Bostic, Nolan, and Gordo right along Highway 82. So we're tracking this very closely at this time. Strong winds are associated with this particular storm system, and we're looking at some very heavy rainfall as well. So we'll want to be monitoring that. I do want to look at our hail tracker very quickly. I don't see anything that would indicate that there's any hail in this storm right now. Just a lot of heavy, well, actually, just as I said that, this popped up near Stansel down towards Carrollton. So there is a possibility that this is producing some smaller size hailstones within the storm system. So right from Stansel, Carrollton, right along Highway 17, we could actually be getting some small hail in this particular system. Debris tracker, not all that impressive. We tend to look for those yellows, greens, and blues when we look at our debris tracker. Right now, not indicating that anything's really being lofted. So we kind of put all of these products together and make best guesses for what we think is happening in Pickens County right now. And right now, our debris indicator is isn't necessarily leaning us towards a tornado, but I will say our shear rate, that is that. So this is something that says, hey, and it, if there's not rotation in the storm, there's going to be some very strong winds. We've already shown you these winds could be getting up to 70 miles per hour potentially. So folks need to be careful. This can easily topple trees and power lines at this time. So we're continuing to watch this uh, situation very closely. Uh, do we have some more information uh, right now? We'll send it over to Dave Nussbaum. All right, Ashley, thanks so much. Uh, you're still watching that one storm. The tornado warning still in effect we have down there in Pickett's County that goes until 4.15. Currently, it's 3.53 our time right now. So that's the one storm we're watching. I've also noticed here just up near Fayette there uh, in Fayette County, we've seen a little increase of lightning. Now, Ashley kind of highlighted, hey, there may be some hail there. Usually, they kind of go hand in hand. When you have a lot of hail, it's some cold air aloft. The uh, hailstones bounce up and down in the cumulonimbus or thunderstorm cloud, and that causes friction, and that causes lightning, of course, right?
uh, static electricity. So that's what we're looking at there uh, with that, but not seeing anything otherwise significant across the area. Just intense storms into Fayette County, heading on into Pickens County right now. We continue to watch that and kind of closing on in maybe far northwestern part of Tuscaloosa County. Now going ahead and looking at the, the velocity here, this is where we look at storm rotation. We've seen a few areas we're keeping an eye on. This one here is where the tornado warning is for. So again, being your safe place out there, reform Gordo area along Highway 82 corridor. That is where we're talking about. That is where the storm is continuing to work its way on in. But notice there's a little bit more trying to form maybe up there just south of Fayette. There's no warning for you right now. We're keeping an eye on that. Uh, we could see some strong winds tied in with that if there's not a tornado. So keep that in mind. The surface winds are great. Winds, we've been talking about that all day, have been strong. They've been sustained around 20 to 25, gusting to 30 to 40 or so mile per hour across all of central Alabama. And so that is outside of thunderstorms like we have here in Birmingham. But, but still, we're still watching uh, that storm pretty closely there. Down there over toward parts of uh, just south there of Reform in the Gordo area. So, again, still has an interesting look to it. Still watching and seeing a little more lightning starting to show up. And usually you start seeing the more lightning. That's a sign the storm's intensifying a little bit. We still kind of have a little bit of that hook trying to form here. Just haven't had a uh, significant rotation with it, but there's definitely rotation with this storm. So, uh, Bostic area, Nolan, Gordo, Fairview, uh, Love Hub area there, Reform, all need to be in your safe place right now as this goes on in throughout parts of kind of northern. And northeastern part of Pickens County. That warning does go again till 4:15 there for the Pickens County area. So we're still continuing to watch that one. Let me zoom on out here and kind of show you what else we have going on. Nothing here in Birmingham area. Back to Coleman, just some light rain. Jasper area, some light rain there. But there are your storms there. They're the only two we have right now. Fayette County and Pickens County. We're watching the Pickens County one. Still has that tornado warning. The little warning we had, tornado warning back off toward just near Columbus, uh, has been expired or canceled at least. So the only one we have at the moment. Still watching there in part of Pickens County. I just want to show you how warm it is out there and humid. And this is where the temperatures and this is what the storms are going to thrive on. It's 73 in Birmingham, the dew point number 62. It's not that high here versus the 68 in Jasper, 65 in Tuscaloosa, 75 there, 78 in Moundville. A little better chance for severe weather. We talked about it all day back to the west of us. And that's indeed what we're looking at as we go forward here uh, throughout the day. Looking at those threats expected out there throughout the day today, too. We did have a high threat for high winds out there, a medium threat for tornadoes, large hail and flooding, lower threat across the area. But the winds have been howling all day today, and this is outside of those thunderstorms, and they'll continue to do so even once the thunderstorms move on in. That tornado threat, it's still there. I was still watching it, that medium threat at least at this point, but we'll continue to uh, kind of show you here what we're talking about with these storms. So the western part of the state, that's what we talked about today, this morning, and yesterday as well. Uh, that's where they had the greater chance, the better ingredients were coming together. Together to give us that threat for some severe weather, and that's indeed what we're seeing so far. Let's go back into the northern part of Pickens County, kind of northeastern part there. Uh, still watching that storm, kind of working its way through the Noland area, back toward Gordo. Again, you need to be in your safe place, lowest level of your home, away from windows. The basement would be perfect, of course, too, uh, as the storm continues to track its way there off to the northeast. Let me go ahead and put a little track on there and show you uh, just what we're talking about with this one here. Bostic, it's going to be right there. Gordo in two minutes. Uh, Fairview, actually Gordo now one minute. Fairview, four minutes. Uh, Ecola there around seven minutes. Same for you in Lubbub. Uh, Shirley, about nine minutes there. Brownville, about ten minutes. Samantha, about 18 minutes there. Uh, Barry, about 26 minutes. Holding, if it holds together that long, it continues on that track kind of off to the northeast at this point. So if you live in the, one of those areas, you need to take shelter immediately. Again, the lowest level of your home, away from windows, interior room, closet, bathroom. If you in, live in a mobile home, you need to get out, need to go in a more sturdy building out there. Uh, as Ashley was saying, a stick type building, a house that's uh, built and connected to some sort of whether it's the basement or a slab or something. That's definitely what you need to do uh, to try to get in a safer place here with that storm as it continues to move to the northeast. Still looking at some rotation with this one here. It has not really weakened all that much, kind of persistent rotation uh, right over top of Gordo. So if you're watching us in Gordo right now, uh, that is where we're talking about, right through here. This is where we are talking, right in this location. Storms heading up toward the Fairview area. There and again, potentially could produce a tornado at any point. Uh, if not a tornado, definitely some stronger winds out there. Just to give you an idea how strong some of these winds are, look at that 66 mile per hour winds right now in the Gordo area. And so that is just thunderstorm winds across the area. So that alone can knock down trees, power lines, and cause power outages, of course, too. So we do have that to contend with. Uh, go ahead and look and see our debris tracker. 
Not really seeing anything where that lines up there uh, with where the rotation is. Uh, possibly something may have been trying to form there. Uh, we do, of course, a lot of pine trees in that area, though. So, again, if there is a possible tornado there, that would cause some of that, of course, to be lofted in the air. And that's what our debris tracker looks for there. So, that is the only storm we have right now here uh, with that tornado warning. The rest of the area, pretty much quiet weather. Some light rain again to the north. But those two storms, northwest, northeastern Pickens County, southwestern part of Fayette, County. Uh, we're keeping a close eye on all those. More storms even farther go back into parts of Mississippi. Now, there's some severe just south of uh, Macon, not too far away from Philadelphia. But at this point, no tornado warnings in Mississippi, which is good. Now, the back edge of all this is this line you see from Kosciuszko, Louisville area, back over toward Eupora, heading over toward uh, Columbus, Starkville area, and eventually, importantly, of course, up to the north as well, too. Now, you see here, this is a live look at Gordo, and this is right where that storm is located. Uh, we're kind of getting a good view of what we have here with that one as we continue to track that one storm. The new tornado warning actually just coming out downstream, if you will, of that. This one now including part of Tuscaloosa County. Going to 445. So that's the same storm we're watching with that rotation as expected to kind of work its way in toward parts of northern Tuscaloosa County. This would be north of Tuscaloosa. Uh, so, Tuscaloosa, this is not going to include you, uh, but this is going to be that northern parts along Highway 43. Uh, this is going to continue on that track and kind of just staying there into parts of Tuscaloosa County. Uh, haven't, I don't know if uh, uh, Alex or Ashley have seen any details on this one, if they have any reports yet of a tornado. But we are seeing a lot more lightning, and I mentioned that earlier. Uh, when you start seeing a lot more lightning, usually the sign the storm starting to intensify a little bit. And you see these little lightning bolts, that's more lightning showing up out there. So the storm is trying to do something here, uh, just crossing over Highway 82 in Gordo. So again, if you're watching this in the Gordo area, you need to be in your safe place. Again, in whatever you have in your house, whether it's the basement, interior room, or closet, that's where you need to be. This is what we're talking about, right in through here. This is where a possible tornado is at this point. And uh, looking at that debris tracker, and still not seeing anything that there uh, that would indicate we have debris, which is good. But uh, nonetheless, it's going to produce some strong winds out there. The storm again coming right on in toward Gordo right now, Highway 82. Two corridor, you can see crossing right over there, just north of Highway 86, kind of just along that. So between Bosick and the Gordo area, and this will continue on into parts now of uh, northern, or rather northwestern part of Tuscaloosa County, Ashley. So uh, yeah. this one's definitely being kind of persistent, but I haven't seen any reports yet of a tornado. Yeah, our partners at the National Weather Service said the circulation here is just far too apparent to cancel this warning, although it's still a radar-indicated area of rotation. There has not been any ground truth of a tornado on. The ground, but after analyzing this area geographically, it is in a much more rural part of Alabama, a rural part of northern Pickens County, and we're about to move into more of a rural part of northern Tuscaloosa County. Does not discount all of those that still live out there at all, but the reason I mention that is often when we have lower population densities, we don't always get the ground truth. So even if a tornado does touch down, we may not see it right away, especially if it's off in a field. And because of our vantage points in this area, as Dave mentioned, and lots of pine trees. We sometimes can have limited visibility. We might see a funnel cloud, but we don't know if it's actually touching the ground. But as our partners at the National Weather Service pointed out, this area of circulation is just far too apparent on our radar to discount this rotation. So we need to continue with this, and that's why we've had the extension of this tornado warning into northern Tuscaloosa County. If you do hear the sirens, you need to go ahead and get to your safe place, but let's not rely on the sirens. Hopefully, your phone went off. Make sure, and if for whatever reason it did not, and you're Northern Tuscaloosa County or Pickens County, make sure you have your emergency alerts turned on on your phone. We need to have multiple ways of getting that information. All right, let me zoom back in here. So this area of rotation just crossed through Gordo. So it just moved over Highway 82. That's going to be on the left side of your screen here. And this is traveling due east, northeast right now at about 45 miles per hour. And as we monitor this, we are going to continue tracking um, just uh, some not only heavy rainfall, but these areas of rotation in here. So we want to make sure that we are um, you know, getting all of that information to you all. So let me, let me look at our shear tracker because this is a very good indicator of the wind. Look at how long this stretch of wind is. Even the strength of wind is extending outside of our what you would consider our normal polygon. Um, so we could be having wind speeds right now 60, 70, 80 miles per hour, even outside of where we have a tornado warning. And I bring that to your attention because we are tracking not only 
possibility of a tornado, but we're also tracking these very strong straight line winds associated with the leading edge of this uh, system right now. All right, we're getting a little bit of return on our velocity product right now, so that's why I wanted to show you our shear tracker. But again, as we look at this, one of the key things that I look for, not only the strength of wind, when we start to see those deep reds, those maroons, that's when we do see um, some very strong winds. But I also look for curvature. This isn't just lining up north to south. When we start to see it making a bit of an S, that would be an indicator to me that there could be still some rotation and possibly confirming that there is a tornado. So again, we look at all of these different weather products here, and these help us determine what we're seeing, where and where it's going, and who will be impacted next. So let me zoom out for you very quickly, because I do want to kind of just do a quick little reset for us, for those that might be just joining us. Here's our active warnings right now. We do have an active warning in northern Tuscaloosa County. This is moving out of Pickens County. It's moved just to the east of Reform. It's moving just east of Highway 82. And we also have an active severe thunderstorm warning just south of Macon, Mississippi, and that will likely be tracking into parts of West Alabama. So that's a severe thunderstorm warning, but we are tracking this tornado warning currently. Let me zoom back in and let's talk about all of this wind that we're dealing with right now because, boy, is it going to be an active afternoon, not only of potentially tornadoes, but also these straight line winds. You may have felt the winds earlier today. We are under a wind advisory, so much of the afternoon has been filled with winds anywhere between 50 to 25 miles per hour, gusts up to 35 and 45 miles per hour at times. So uh, this is definitely an active system across central Alabama right now. Let's uh, look at our radar product because I want to switch over very quickly and see if we're dealing, not really picking up a lot on our debris tracker right now, but again, this is just one of the many uh, tools in our toolbox. So we look at our debris indicator, and again, when we start to see those yellows, greens, blues, that would be a little bit more telling. I will say in this last scan, I do see a little spot that is uh, a little interesting. So I want to zoom in here because this is going to be right along that Pickin County, Tuscaloosa County line. And I'm noticing that there could actually be a little bit of uh, debris being lofted. That's just to the east of Fairview right now. Again, not substantial. A lot of times when we see that bright green or that blue, it really sticks out to us. But this definitely could be a little bit of debris. Some of that could be being picked up by those really intense winds, but it, on the other side, it could be some rotation that's lifting that. Also keep in mind, our debris tracker does not track where the area of rotation is. This is likely sometimes just outside of that, and it's a uh, back behind it. So it's a little bit of a lag because that debris gets lofted and then the radar picks that up and it then sends that information back to us. So it's not necessarily happening right now. It's just, again, one of those indicators. So that has stuck together. So as we look at that right now, that's going to be crossing over Highway 171 towards Moores Bridge, down towards Brownville and Shirley. So uh, if you live anywhere along uh, 171 there, I would go ahead and get to your safe place. You need to make sure anyone that's inside this warning box, you need to go ahead and get into your safe place along Highway 43 from Hagler Mill Estates, Searcy Farm, Samantha, Skeleton Bend Estates. Go ahead and get to your safe place, even up towards Wyndham Springs. That's in the northern part of Tuscaloosa County. You'll need to go ahead and get into your safe place as well. Let's go back to our uh, velocity product here. So this is where we're looking at a very well-defined couplet, and this is moving very quickly. If you are in Gordo, you're safe. Bostic, you're clear. Reform, you're clear. Now in Fairview, this is now move to your east. So you are clear from danger at this point. This is now fully into northwest Tuscaloosa County, anywhere from Ecola, Brownsville, Shirley, all the way to Samantha up towards Wyndham Springs. Make sure to get into your safe place right now. We are definitely tracking a developing situation here, and it looks like there could be another area of rotation that we're looking at as well. So we're going to get to that. Uh, we'll, we'll send it to the Weather Center here in just a second with uh, Storm Team Meteorologist Alex Puckett, and he'll have a little bit more information because we are looking at several areas right now of uh, potential rotation. One of those that I'm tracking currently in Tuscaloosa County, here's some more information with meteorologist Alex Puckett. Alex? Yeah, Ashley, a new tornado warning that has just been issued right now, and this is going to be for parts of Fayette, Walker, and far northern Tuscaloosa counties. That's for a circulation that's right on the Fayette-Tuscaloosa County line. So this is a new circulation that has popped up. So let me uh, change a couple of settings here on my side. 
and uh, get this set up for us. This is a new tornado warning that is now in effect, uh, again, for Fayette, Walker, and Tuscaloosa counties. Uh, this is going to go, let me get a little more information on this here. This is going to go until, uh, uh, let's see. Until uh, 5 p.m. So this is going to be a 5 p.m. expiration. This includes Jasper. It includes Summiton. This goes all the way up to the uh, Jefferson Walker County line, the Jefferson, or excuse me, the uh, Walker Jefferson County line, the Walker Blunt, and the Walker Coleman County line. So all the way to the northeast end of the county. And that's our second circulation that we're watching there. Strong winds and the potential for some spin that could produce a tornado there. And on the southern end of this storm, again, that tornado warning continuing for northern Tuscaloosa County right now. Ashley? All right. Uh, we'll get back to Ashley in just a little bit. Um, I do see a report right now from Lamar County. Uh, some barn roof damage um, on Mountain Gap Road in Beaverton. So that would have been as this line of storms was moving through uh, a little bit earlier. And. Um, and uh, I think we've got Ashley back now. Yes. Uh, all right. So as we're tracking this, I was putting some uh, wind speeds on this, really doing some a little bit further analysis on this particular storm system because now we're tracking, as Alex said, two areas of rotation. This is important to note because now we're dealing, uh, we're, we're kind of monitoring two spots where we want to keep a watchful eye out for uh, potential rotation, tornadoes, and as Alex mentioned, there are some spots that are reporting some damage now, so we'll be getting to that in just a second. So let's talk about what we're dealing with on uh, these two storms, because this is quite a large part of our viewing area at this time. And as I zoom out here, we'll kind of do a, just a brief reset so you can kind of see. Uh, and the reason I want to point this out is here's I-65, all right? We've got from Coleman, Birmingham, Hoover, and Alabaster. A lot of this activity is about to reach some of our more populated parts of our viewing area moving through Tuscaloosa County right now, heading towards Walker County from Jasper into Birmingham. So northern Jefferson County very uh, soon could be in kind of the uh, the track of this storm system. I want to point that out. Even though you're not in the warning yet, you could very easily be uh, seeing some of the consequences of this uh, line of thunderstorm. So we want to make sure that you're already starting to take some action and staying prepared. Really the key to all of these storms is just the preparation. And that is what's most important, making sure you're in a safe spot. We don't want folks scrambling as the storm is right on top of you. We want to make sure that you've already done what you need to. Go ahead and get inside, turn on that TV, and just watch where the storms are. And uh, we'll be good. We'll be safe. We want folks to remember those, that protocol, put as many walls between you and the outside as possible. Go to that interior room, the lowest floor, stay away from windows, and that's going to be your key here for today. All right, look at all of the rain. I want to show you this. This is our reflectivity. So when you see these gradients of orange, reds, yellows, a green on your map, this is showing where the intensity of rain is. So the deeper the reds, the darker, brighter that purple, that's very intense rainfall than those lighter bands of rain from yellow to green there. Now, we do have Storm Team Meteorologist on Interstate 22 in Walker County. Michael, what are you seeing right now? Well, that's right, Ashley. The rain really picking up here. That's that's good news. We've had rain on and off for the last hour and a half or so. Uh, that's helping to stabilize the atmosphere just a bit uh, compared to a day w without rainfall. But now we're getting beginning to get lightning increasing. Uh, we're about 23 miles uh, to the northeast of that, that center of rotation. Uh, that center of rotation coming out again, that eastern part of Fayette County into Walker County. Still seeing a good amount of folks on the road. Uh, we don't want that. We want everybody inside in their safe place right now. Their tornado safe place. It's getting dark, and this is a situation, certainly, uh, you can look at the radar, uh, you will not be able to see any type of circulation. It would be completely rain-wrapped, so don't even try to do that. And on top of all that, it's getting very dark. Something else I've noticed throughout the day, Ashley, after leaving the station earlier, is we've just been socked in with clouds, so that's more good news. So we have a couple of things working for us, a couple of param uh, parameters working for us to uh, stabilize the atmosphere, but that said, we still have just enough instability and certainly plenty of wind shear for any of these thunderstorms that will move through for the rest of this evening uh, to circulate and produce a few brief spin-up tornadoes. As of right now, this doesn't look like a setup for these large long-track tornadoes, but as you know, it only takes one uh, to cause major damage for an individual home and 
or, and, and of course, it, uh, it could be loss of life, even just with one brief spin up tornadoes. So please take this seriously, and we'll keep you posted right here from the Weather Alert Unit. In the meantime, I'm meteorologist Michael Haynes. Local coverage you can count on. Ashley? All right, thanks, Michael. I want to show you this really quickly. I just popped up our velocity product because that area of rotation in the north, uh, in the northern storm, I should say, uh, the far northern part of Tuscaloosa County towards Sandtown, um, that's moving towards Bethel. That is actually showing a little bit more promise as far as rotation goes right now. And that's something that we're going to have to be keeping a very watchful eye on. Let me go ahead and circle these two spots for you. Uh, a little easier for me to see our weather team here, but I want to make sure that you're aware of exactly what we're talking about now that we're talking about two areas of rotation and I'll move this map just a little bit so you can see this here as I lift this map up just a little bit uh, we can see that a little bit better so <clears throat> here's that there we go those are those two areas that we're looking at so one moving towards Sandtown another one crossing over Highway 43 from Gorgas to Holiday Shores and then down towards Beacon Point we want to make sure that uh, you're in your safe spot. But the one that, to me, right now actually has a little bit more intrigue is the one that's moving towards Sandtown. Look at this couplet, this bright green and this bright red here. That's concerning to me at this point. I'm going to zoom in here so we get a little bit better perspective. Let me go ahead and turn off our telestrate. And I want to turn our lightning back on uh, because oftentimes when we're looking at this lightning, uh, we can get a little bit better perspective. They're a little bit small on the screen right now. We can uh, maybe... Uh, make those a little bit larger here in just a moment, but where you're starting to see these lightning strikes, that would also indicate the potential of some intensification for this storm system, but this is really a uh, well-defined couplet here. This is kind of a textbook. This is on Old Jasper Road and then towards Christian Road, and this is moving due east, northeast. So if you know, uh, if you're anywhere from County Road 46 to County Road 51, down through Sandtown, Old Cheatham Road, and then over towards Whitson along County Road 40. You definitely need to be in your safe place right now. This is an impressive area of rotation. As I look at our shear rate, if it's making that S shape, which it is, this is, uh, to me, all of our, all of our in-house tools in our toolbox are really pointing uh, towards this as a tornado. Not sure that we have any ground truth on that just yet. Haven't heard from our weather team on that. So generally, uh, we would hear that, but I haven't heard any uh, officials, and we haven't, we we're connected with the National Weather Service and our media, our, not only our National Weather Service partners, but our emergency manager partners. Um, no, no ground truth has been reported yet. That does not mean that this isn't on the ground. So we're going to treat this as if it is a tornado on the ground because there's a lot of uh, indicators right now for me that's saying that there is a tornado on the ground. But again, we haven't had ground truth, but I'm going to treat this situation. Yes. Uh, so this is now popping up. This is going to be near the old Salem Church and Gibson Cemetery uh, moving into Fayette County. So if you live near old Salem Church or the Gibson Hill Cemetery along Gibson Hill Road or near there in eastern Fayette County, you need to get in a safe place. And that's going to be approaching Oakman uh, once it gets into Walker County. It'll cross Highway 18 near Oakman. So that circulation now producing a tornado. Uh, if we can uh, come over to Lynx uh, 1. When we get an opportunity, I'm going to circle this for us right here. That little green uh, uh, circle there that you see, I've highlighted it with the pen. That is our current tornado. That is now a tornado on the ground producing damage. This is going to stay east of Barrie uh, and going to make its way in the far eastern part of Fayette County. If you live east of Barrie, you need to be in a safe place. And if you live along and east of Highway 18 in Fayette County, you need to be a safe place. That highway takes that sort of east-west turn as it moves into Walker County, and it's going to cross Highway 18 near Oakman. So if you're watching us in Oakman, we need you to get in your safe place right now. Corona, you need to get in your safe place right now as well. And then, uh, again, Gibson Hill Cemetery uh, in Fayette County, back towards Old Salem Church. If you're watching us there, this is where that tornado is headed, that general area. So if you live close to those spots, you need to get in a safe place right now. This is a tornado doing damage right now. 
Uh, I believe, Ashley, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this is the first confirmed tornado we have today in Alabama. Yes. This is now moving out of far northern Tuscaloosa County into far eastern Fayette County. This will be east of the Alta community. Uh, this is going to probably pretty co uh, closely parallel uh, Gibson Hill Road as it moves northeast. And it's going to take that track back towards Highway 18 and Oakman. So if you're watching us right now, far eastern Fayette County and southwestern Walker County, you have got to get in a safe place right now. Uh, that is uh, the situation as of this moment. Ashley? All right, I, I wanted to put some cities that we're tracking on here, Alex, uh, just very quickly. If you're inside this red blinking box on your screen, this is known as a polygon, we want to make sure that you're getting to your safe place. You've got less than 10 minutes in most spots on the screen here. So from Bethel, Oakman, Good Springs, Aldridge, and Cedar Lake, get into your safe place immediately. Remember, that's putting as many walls between you and the outside as possible. We want to make sure that you're staying away from windows, you're getting to the lowest floor. And if you are in a mobile home, try to get to a much sturdier structure. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to be in a basement, but we want you to be on the bottom floor. Um, unfortunately, those mobile homes can turn into projectiles a lot of times with these storms. Uh, this is, to me, again, uh, again, confirmed tornado on the ground sitting just to the south of Salem. And this storm system currently is going to be tracking over Old Cheatham Road. We had just mentioned that just a few moments ago, heading towards County Road 46. And this is going to be making its way northeast at about 45 miles per hour. As we're looking at this, that's where the red and the green is coming together on your screen. And that's just on top of Sandtown. If you are in Sandtown, get into your safe place right away. Uh, this storm system, like I mentioned, is sitting right on top of you right now. It's moving across County Road 46 as we're speaking, and this is going to be making its way towards Old Tuscaloosa Road. There's also Lost Creek um, that runs uh, runs you right right through here. So we want to make sure if you're on Lost Creek, so uh, the in the actual waterway, Lost Creek, not the road name. And so this is moving towards Bethel and then over towards Pleasant Field and then Drifton. Uh, all these areas inside this polygon. Now, I know that we actually have two tornado warnings that we're dealing with, uh, but I do want to mention, look at the one on the south side. That's, not, that's the one that's creating and producing quite a bit of lightning, which means that it could be intensifying here. We are watching these lightning strikes very closely because the number of lightning strikes that we get would indicate the intensification of this storm system. And it does look like they're start we're starting to see a bit more lightning in our storm in the north. Uh, but the storm down here, just and they're both in northern Tuscaloosa County right now. Uh, but I do want to go back to the other storm very quickly because it actually looks like the rotation is starting to strengthen just a bit. I'm taking our lightning off of here just so we can get a little bit better vantage point. Uh, this is what that area of rotation looks like. But again, there's one. We've got a tornado on the ground. Area of rotation to our south. We have not forgotten about you there, but it's broadening out just a bit, turning into more, in my opinion, a big wind event. But I want to stay with a storm that we do have a confirmed tornado on the ground, but anywhere from Salem, Wiley, down towards uh, Skelton Bend, make sure that you are in your safe place, and then moving out to Providence, Driftwood, Browntown, up through Aldridge, Oakman, get to your safe place right away. This is going to be a, a wide-reaching area that I'm kind of telling folks to get in their safe place, but I'm covering both my bases here because we have two separate areas of rotation, and one of those does have a confirmed tornado uh, associated with it. And that would be the storm that's moving into Bethel right now. So from Bethel over towards Oakman. If you're in Barrie, New Lexington, or Gorgas, uh, you're, you're in your, you're, the storm has moved past you at this point. I would still stay in your safe place for a few moments longer. You're dealing with some very heavy rain and some very gusty winds there. Just to quickly put this in perspective, I do want to show you some of the, the winds that we're dealing with. Look at this, 73 mile per hour winds, 64 mile per hour winds, even down on that southern storm, 65 mile per hour winds. So this is definitely, in addition to the areas of rotation, we're also dealing with some very strong winds out there today. Wind advisory is in place still. All right, let's go back here because I want to zoom back into this storm just between Salem and Bethel. That's where there, there's most likely going to see this area of rotation. Although the last couple of scans 
we've started to see this possibly cycling just a little bit because we're not seeing that bright red anymore. You know where those pixels touch the green and the reds come together. That's a moment ago when I said I think that there's definitely a tornado on the ground. Now that is not as impressive, but it's still present. Even in this last scan, you'll notice how uh, those pixels change just a bit. So now we're seeing those deeper maroon colors, some lighter and darker greens coming together. So that would still indicate a well-defined couplet, area of rotation, very still likely a tornado on the ground there just outside of Bowley Springs moving towards Bethel Eno and this storm system tracking off to the northeast. So if you're in Pleasant Field, Cedar Lake, get to your safe place right now. All right, let me collapse this down and we'll move this just a little bit because we want to make sure if you're in Oakman, if you're over towards America and then Cordova, you get, get into your safe place. So now this is starting to make its way into Walker County and now we're talking about Interstate 22, a very well-traveled area. Our, our weather alert unit right Right now is in Walker County. It is on Interstate 22. Clearly, we're parked there, but now you can really start to see that rain picking up from our uh, weather alert unit there. So they're tracking the storm. Uh, they're doing it very safely. Our storm team meteorologist Michael Haynes is in the weather alert unit, and. Uh, when he's ready, you can let me know. I would like to see uh, how are things starting to change. The last time that we talked to you, Michael, it wasn't raining nearly as hard as it is right now. Tell me how things have changed within the last few minutes where you are. Actually, like you said, the rain really beginning to pick up right now uh, here as, as we speak here. Just south of Jasper, the intersection of, uh, of 269 and Interstate 22. So that rain really beginning to pick up. We've also noticed an increase in the amount of lightning uh, with this. And as you, as you said, uh, the circulation looks like it's beginning to weaken. But uh, something that really concerns me is, as I look around here, uh, you may not be able to see it there on I-22, but there they go. There's plenty of cars heading directly in the Direction of that uh, of that likely tornado that we have uh, back down toward uh, toward Oakman now and that circulation crossing into Walker County now that particular band of traffic moving a bit more farther to the to the to the northwest but st still uh, we have these storms capable of producing a tornado and there's just too many people out on the road uh, from my liking right now uh, so if you're able to listen to us on radio just please get home get to your tornado safe place this will not last all night uh, conditions will continue to improve uh, but as, as you guys have mentioned back at the station uh, we do have a likely tornado or at least we did uh, moving out of uh, Fayette County into Walker County but bottom line here right now very close to Jasper we have very heavy rain falling, lightning beginning to pick back up, and still plenty of cars out on the road. Ashley. All right. Thanks a lot, Michael. So, again, what we're looking at right now, you've got heavy rainfall. That's where Michael is currently on Interstate 22. Look how gray the skies are getting in Tuscaloosa right now. Very ominous. And even though we have that tornado warning in northern Tuscaloosa County, it's not for the city of Tuscaloosa, but that's a great vantage point. We've got our camera facing north there where we can see. And I believe we have a photographer actually on the scene. That's live video coming in from one of our photojournalists in Tuscaloosa at this hour. We have also have our storm team tower cam in Summerton. And you can see just maybe a hint of sunshine on the horizon. And then that cloud cover starts to cover up. Up the sky there in Summerton. The rain is beginning to fall, and I will say this for our Summerton Tower Cam that will be a very good vantage point as this storm gets closer and closer to Interstate 22. That Summerton Tower Cam will really be able to pick up this storm as it evolves, moving closer to Jefferson County. Summerton sits right on the Walker County Jefferson County line. We'll first start to see the cloud cover increasing, followed by that intense rainfall. It's kind of amazing how dark things have gotten in Tuscaloosa. It's 426. The sun technically doesn't set until after 5 o'clock now. So this isn't just because the sky is getting dark naturally because of sunset. It looks like we're really starting to see a, a bit of a gray, dark sky there in Tuscaloosa this evening. So let's go back to our um, storm team radar very quickly, and then I'll send it back over to Alex with some new information. Uh, still tracking these two areas of rotation from Oakman down towards Wiley. So kind of a wide swath of severe weather this afternoon that we're tracking and these storms tracking off to the north and to the east. So 
Really, it's going to be bearing down on Interstate 22 from Jasper to Adamsville, including Mulga, Concord. Even though these places have not been warned for, this is going to be a pretty fierce storm that's moving into a number of these communities in western Jefferson County, especially southeastern parts of Walker County. Again, taking aim on that Interstate 22 corridor, I would say pretty much out of Birmingham all the way into Jasper, two areas of rotation. But this, this line right now is starting to create some little pockets of, um, of rotation. But with a little bit more information, let's send it over to the Weather Center right now. We've got Storm Team Meteorologist Alex Puckett. Alex? Yeah, Ashley, one of the things that I have been keeping a close eye on here is how the lightning has changed as these storms have continued to push east. This northern part of the storm, the one that's trying to warn for Walker County, has seen that lightning trend down. The southern end in northern Tuscaloosa County has started to trend up. And I do want to remind the folks north of Tuscaloosa, far northern Tuscaloosa County, uh, near Wiley, uh, you are still under a tornado warning right now. And there's still some circulation here. It's not as impressive, but we've also noted that the circulation in Walker County has broadened out some. That tornado warning remains in place for Oakman, Cordova, uh, Dora, and Summerton. Uh, it includes uh, the southeastern side of Jasper, it includes Sipsey. Uh, the actual tornado, based on the radar data we have, has at lifted for the moment. Uh, we don't have a debris signature at this point. Some of those yellows that you see in northern Tuscaloosa County, that's some heavy rain interfering with the radar there, not actually debris in the air. Uh, and you can see the really heavy rain and perhaps some small hail uh, in the far northern end of Tuscaloosa County near the Walker County line. But what we may watch here over the next few minutes, it, it's possible that we may have these storms transitioning a bit until so that northern storm may sort of hand off to the southern storm and we may see that the southern end of this this big cluster of thunderstorms starts to get a little more intense. We'll keep an eye on that rotation pretty closely. There oftentimes when you get storms set up like this, one on top of the other, that southern circulation can end up intensifying while the northern one weakened. Still there is circulation there in Walker County near Oakman. So if you're watching us in Oakman, Cordova, Summerton, or Sipsy, you need to get in a safe place. But at least at the moment, we don't believe a tornado is ongoing, but one could drop at any moment. And in northern Tuscaloosa County, it's the same thing. We don't currently have a tornado, but one could develop at any moment. That's why we've got that tornado warning in place. Ashley? Thanks a lot, Alex. And, you know, kind of to your point, this is fairly reminiscent of a couple of weeks ago when we had that tornado move through Hale County. And what happened is that tornado produced an area of rotation. It dropped down. The tornado hit the ground. Then it lifted. It recycled a bit. And then it touched back down. It did that multiple times. So it was one storm, but it produced several different tornadoes. Uh, so we could be dealing with a similar situation here where it's one continuous thunderstorm, but every now and again it recycles. And that thunderstorm produces a tornado. That tornado can lift briefly. And and then recycle and then return down to the ground, becoming another tornado, so on and so forth. So that's why we don't necessarily want to take our eyes off of this, and that's why I want you to listen closely. Just because we mentioned, okay, the area of rotation is broadening out, that does not equate to the storm is over. Those are two very different conversations. So the conversation we're having right now is this is an ongoing severe weather event with the possibility that this tornado could cycle back, and we want to make sure that we're looking at everything. I want to show you the rainfall rates right now. This is impressive. So this is what we're looking at uh, across central Alabama right now. Fortunately for us, I do not think that this will devolve into a big flooding event, but be mindful that the intensity of rainfall will create very limited visibilities on the roadways. As Michael mentioned before, lots of cars out there on the roads, and I know maybe an element of it is you just don't know. Maybe it's someone from out of town, they don't know where to go or what to do. If anything, maybe pull off onto the side of the road, stop at a gas station until this passes. This is not lasting long, maybe 15 to 30 minutes, but much better to be safe than sorry. Rain rates right now, anywhere between five to six inches of rain per hour. That simply means if all of the rain fell at the intensity that's falling right now over the course of one hour, it would fill up a bucket measuring about six inches, five inches even. But right now, uh, it's moving quickly. If this all fell in an hour, we would have flooding issues all over Alabama. Not necessarily the case, but it could create some minor ponding on roadways and definitely some slick spots. So folks really need to be careful. As we do look at our flood potential, though, that's back to our west from Gumbud, Berry, back towards Ashcraft Corner. So not over Cordova or Aldridge right now.
Uh, but let's go back to our radar because that's really what we want to focus on right now as we are continuing to track these areas of rotation in both Tuscaloosa and Walker counties. So we've got two spots that we're looking at, and I'm going to zoom back out so we can kind of see both of them in the same frame. We have the benefit of that just a little bit here. Let me put our storm relative velocity. So what this is measuring is the speed of the storm in relation to the actual how fast it's kind of moving towards uh, the radar. So we what we can track now are these areas of greens and reds, and that's where those um, those winds are rotating. So when the green and the red come together, that's what we're looking at. I'm going to remove our lightning here very quickly just to give you a little bit better vantage point so you can see a little bit more. Sometimes that lightning does clutter it just a bit. I'm going to start with our southern storm then move up to Oakman and Walker County. Uh, we're calling it our northern storm. So this is over Three Fork, Browntown, and Whitson. It does actually look like this is starting to uh, potentially wanting to try to maybe create a little bit of rotation again. Um, so we will we'll monitor this. It has broadened out quite a bit, so we're not looking at a, um, a tight couplet here, but there are still competing wind speeds. So wind directions here. So if you're in Driftwood, Little Shoal, Maxine, I would go ahead and get to your safe place right now. It doesn't look like this warning is going to be extended, though. However, this could create some very strong winds. The, by the shape of what we're seeing on our velocity, Velocity product. This looks like it's turning into a big wind event. So this is a straight line wind event. So that rotating column of air has stretched out in more of a straight line wind event. But again, we could be talking about down power lines, trees. So there could start to be some power outages in some of these areas too. So we want to make sure. And with that, I do want to mention, download our CBS 42 app because if your power does go out and you can no longer watch us on television, we are streaming continuously through both our website and on the app. So you can watch us right there from the palm of your hand. Let me zoom back into our Oakman storm because it does look like in this last scan, a small little appendage is starting to loop back around and that would be evidence of possibly the storm storm kind of recycling just a little bit. This is going to be just outside of Oakman, making its way towards I-22. It's right now right over Williamstown, Aldridge, Bradleytown, and Drifton down to Good Springs and Pleasant Field. Now, it's a bit broad. I will, I will admit that. It is a bit broad currently. Alex? Tornado warning for Sumter and Greene counties. Okay, so that's another warning that's moving out of Mississippi currently, and that's a, the storm system down to our south. So, um, so we'll we'll go to that in just a second. That will be our third active tornado warning here within the last few minutes. All right. So currently, if you do live anywhere from Jasper, Dora, along Interstate 22, get to your safe place. You still are under that tornado warning, and right now it looks like the threat for. Tuscaloosa County is uh, coming to an end as the storm system starting to slowly move into the southern part of Walker County and then it will emerge into the western side of Jefferson County here very shortly. Again, a big wind event down to our south. You can even see from our Walker County, uh, this is uh, from Walker County, this is our weather alert unit there. Our weather alert unit right now has storm team meteorologist Michael Haynes there, and we can really see that wind picking up just a little bit. I'm not sure if Michael can hear us, but I'm really curious about the wind speeds right now, if you've been able to feel those winds picking up, because the brunt of the storm has still not quite reached I-22, but I bet those winds are really starting to pick up there. Michael, can you hear me? Yes, I've got you, Ashley. Uh, right now, the uh, the wind, uh, based on our system here, gusting at uh, at 15 miles per hour. But of course, we've had a much higher gust than that. We can just feel it here in the vehicle, um, swaying back and forth just a bit. As you can see the rain, it is pouring down like cats and dogs here. Very dark. As you mentioned, for this time of the day, plenty of vehicles, though, still on the road, and that is a concern because we are not out of this severe weather threat, this tornado threat just yet, even though the area of rotation now just south of Jasper, uh, right now just south of I-22 in terms of uh, relating to Jasper, but uh, this polygon now warning this possible rotation will cross I-22 between uh, Cordova and Sipsi over the coming minutes. Uh, the rotation as of right now, not as impressive as it was a little while ago, but it's still there. And uh, seeing lots of cars, and we're, we're on this overpass, this I-22 and uh, this uh, two, Highway 269 overpass, and we do have cars under there. So 
the, the, the screaming message here, don't just don't put yourself in a situation uh, where you could get um, uh, somewhere where you can't get out in terms of a possible tornado. That's that's the reason uh, we want you to stay at home, uh, get home and stay there until this severe weather threat does wind down. Fortunately, this will not be an all night type of deal, but just too many people on the roads right now. Don't get out if you have to stay at work a little bit longer. Just stay in your safe place and then once these storms pass, uh, come on home. But as of right now, uh, just south of Jasper uh, along I-22, we have very heavy rain. The lightning has let up just a little bit and this could very well turn into an isolated flash flooding situation. Otherwise, aside uh, from that uh, tornado threat, Ashley. Michael, we are going to uh, also be tracking that tornado warning down in Su Green and Sumter County. So looking right here, we are talking about a big wind event. We're losing a little bit of the structure of that rotation for the storm in Walker County as well as northern Tuscaloosa County. So we'll continue to monitor this very closely, but I do want to move to our new tornado warning over in Sumter County at this time uh, because that looks like our, that's our new area of interest as we start to uh, monitor this. I'm going to switch over radars very quickly so we can get a little bit better perspective of that particular storm system. So moving down south, this is going to be just south of Carrollton and Aliceville, where they've already seen a tornado warning today. That would be in Pickens County, but this particular storm system moving out of Sumter County, now moving into the northern part of Greene County, eerily similar to a track that we saw just a couple of weeks ago. It's a little bit north of that, but very close nonetheless to Sawyerville, although Sawyerville not in this particular warning at the moment. All right, let me go ahead and zoom in for you. Dealing with some very heavy rainfall here, and on the back side of this storm, likely is where we're seeing a bit of that rotation. I'm going to put our storm relative velocity back on. This is where we're seeing those greens and red. But this is a very well defined couplet right here, just outside of Mount Hebron. Uh, no doubt, and I can see definitely why they've issued the tornado warning. Let me collapse our warning box for just a second. It'll take that little red off of the background. We can see it a little bit better. So this is going to be New West Green moving over West Green right now. So if you are in in northern Greene County, go ahead and get to your safe place. This is along County Road 117, County Road 20, and then Viola B. Morgan Road. Make sure that you are getting to your safe place, putting as many walls between you and the outside as possible right now. This is where that area of rotation would be. See where that red on your screen and the greens are coming together? Where those pixels meet, that would indicate that area of rotation. These are winds, different directions that are moving together. So that's what our radar is picking up on right now. Let me zoom out just a touch, and I want to put a track on this and show you who is in the path of this particular storm at this time. So as we uh, continue tracking this, that's what we're going to see. So let me zoom out here for you. And what we're going to notice that this is going to be just to the north of Clinton at this time. And I'll put our warning box back on here really quickly uh, just so we can see. Oh, there we go. There's our warning. So now we can see that polygon. So anywhere between Pleasant Ridge and Clinton, get to your safe place. This is going to be along Highway 14. Alex, what was that? We got a new tornado warning now for northern Jefferson County. All right, let's go to that. And so this is going to be north of downtown Birmingham. You're talking about places like Fultondale, Adamsville, Brookside, Kimberly. Uh, if you're watching us in the north side of Birmingham, north of Birmingham and Jefferson County, we want you in a safe place. This is for the storm that's coming out of Walker County. All right, as you were talking, I'm setting up the radar here so we can see exactly. What we're looking at, we'll move to our Birmingham radar very quickly. And as we do that, we can definitely see that that is uh, changing shape very quickly. This is actually the same storm system that was moving out of northern Tuscaloosa County. So that's important to note that this is something that we're going to be dealing with. Uh, we'll, we'll do this for just a second. Let me stay on the Jefferson County storm. Alex, if you can analyze the storm back towards Green and, uh, or excuse me, northern Green County moving out of Sumter. Uh, if anything pops up, let me know. I will analyze this one on air right now. And then we'll get back to the Green County storm, and then um, we'll continue monitoring this very closely here. All right, here's what we're looking at. Um, or if if Dave wants to take over the Green County storm too, this one is definitely starting to show a little bit more curvature. They're moving right over Maxine, and this is heading due east northeast from Porter over towards uh, really all the way up to Quentin. So if you're from Quentin down towards Mulga, go ahead and get to your safe place. This is going to be on along Interstate 22 and just. Just north of Pratt City. Pratt City is no stranger to this dangerous weather and tornadoes, but Pratt City, you're sitting just outside the polygon right now. 
uh, but I would still encourage you to go over that preparedness plan. I've always said that these polygons, although they do a great job of fencing in where the danger most likely is, there's nothing magical about these lines and these storms and some of those ingredients can bleed outside of these lines. So I always want to make sure folks that are even around the tornado polygon know that they could take uh, shelter even if the storm is not right on top of you. All right, so we are definitely seeing this broader area developing near Maxine, some very gusty winds at this time. We do have some new information. I'm going to send it over to Dave Nussbaum. Hi, right, we're still watching the Jefferson one. We're still watching this uh, storm get down in Greene County right now. This one's kind of creeping its way closer there uh, across part of the area. A lot of heavy rain here is working its way through that region. And you'll notice here again, it's right in through here. If there is a tornado, it's going to be wrapped in rain, folks. So we're not going to be able to really uh, see, other than when you look at the velocity product here, that is where our tornado is located. You can see the circulation showing up right there earlier. Our debris tracker is not picking up anything at the moment. Well, I say that. Uh, but actually, I'll be Trying to pick up something here. This is kind of far away enough from the radar. It's hard to tell from both Birmingham and also Columbus, but there's a chance there. There could have been maybe a little bit of some debris, debris trying to come in from this storm here. You can see kind of just north of Gainesville there and kind of showing back up. That would be the location. Let me stop this loop right in through here. And if you take that and you line it up with where our rotation is, they're very close and similar to each other. This would, if there is a tornado here, it's going to be wrapped in rain. You're not going to be able to see it. Of course, you might be able to hear it. Winds are Incredibly strong here, too, just dealing with again the storm itself that's working its way on in toward that area. So, this is due south of Aliceville right now, and I'm kind of putting a tracker on this one here. Uh, this one's moving fairly quickly at this point, about 50 miles per hour. Uh, it looks like it gets into the snotty area around 12 minutes, Ralph around 18 minutes, uh, Gina there about 18 minutes as well, Romulus around 23 here, and Buell about 28 minutes now. So, we're still looking at uh, quite a bit. You can see there's our summiting camera, and that is a different storm than this one, of course. But that's the live look in Summerton. This one again, further down to the south right now, and that's the one we continue to watch here. Again, uh, our debris tracker trying to hint at maybe something and possibly a tornado here. Let me kind of zoom in a little tighter there on that road where it could be crossing over right now. Uh, this is right near Clinton, right about the Clinton area. This is what we're talking about, right in this location here. Again, we're talking right along County Road 17, uh, State Road 14, uh, Pool Road area there. If you live in those areas in the Clinton area, you need to be in your safe place at the lowest level of your home. Again, away from windows, a basement obviously preferred here. Uh, again, the storms here does show that's right kind of where the rotation has been at this point. So, again, that's kind of where we're talking about. Let me go ahead and switch over to show you the different uh, vantage point. Of our radar here. Uh, this is coming from the radar over into uh, closer to Birmingham now. Not quite seeing as much, but still that same area though, not too far away from Clinton. Pretty intense storm showing up at this point. And uh, looking at the wind shear rate again, winds aren't quite as strong there at this point, so still going to be uh, kind of far away from the radar, trying to get the best sample in here, an idea for you. Nonetheless, though, in that region, we can still have some very strong winds. Uh, this is again down in Greene County. So this is the storm we're keeping an eye on here. Again, State Road 14. Area County Road 117, Creek Road area there. That's what we're talking about. This is kind of where we do have again showing, showing uh, where that rotation has been and kind of zooming out a little bit more. That's north of the Clinton area there and it's moving off to the northeast and kind of working its way through rural parts there of northern Greene County. So this is the one storm we're watching out down there. Uh, kind of zooming back out, let's go over toward our storm that we've been tracking here across northern Jefferson County. Uh, this one here has been pretty intense. Look at all the lightning showing up with it. Uh, this one right over top about the Maxine area. Storm is moving very, very fast. I might add over 60 miles per hour. So this one's really pushing quickly across the area there, giving this one kind of looking at the latest here uh, with how much rotation we're talking. It's right in through here, the Porter, Maxine area. And there's our rotation moving quickly off to the northeast. You can see Adamsville, Mount Olive, Brookside area, flat top, heading over to south of Kimberly area there toward Croston, Brentwood. If it holds together, kind of working its way just north of the Fultondale area, uh, not seeing it this point, uh, any debris with it. That's some good news, but still could produce some very, very strong winds uh, with the storm as it continues to move on in. So if you're watching us in those locations, you need to take shelter immediately. If you're watching us in Adamsville, Brookside, a flat top area there, uh, kind of zooming on even tighter there. Palos Hills or Palos area. Uh, we're talking about that as well. Uh, heading to the Fieldstown, Dogtown area, uh, Cunningham. That will view are going to be in the track of this possible tornado. Again, we're not seeing anything on a debris tracker from it, but this is where it is located here, where the red and greens are coming together. That is where circulation is. And if you look at the uh, actual. Uh, 
radar itself, that is the rate where we would have a possible kind of hook right across this area here. So we are seeing a lot of lightning, maybe some hail mixed in over toward the door area. Brian, right now, up near Summerton, kind of just north of where the center of circulation is. Uh, so that's where we were seeing. We showed you the camera earlier of Summerton, the very, very heavy rain coming in. That's why you can see where that camera is located uh, there. Again, near Summerton, this is where our circulation center would be located, moving off to the northeast here fairly quickly, I might add. Let me zoom out and kind of do a storm track on this one for you just to give you an idea of what you can expect and when you need to, again, to see this system coming on in. Again, this one's moving really fast here. We'll go about 65 miles per hour, according to the Weather Service. Uh, Graysville, five minutes. Adamsville, six minutes. Brookside, eight minutes. Mount Olive, 12 minutes for you. Uh, when it moves on in, you can see how heavy that rain is in Summerton. So if there is a tornado, it is going to be rain wrapped. You're not going to be able to see that. Uh, Fultondale, about 14 minutes for you. Kimberly, 17. Center Point. 20 minutes now until that storm would get in. If it holds together, maintains Pinson area, Chalkville, 21, 22 minutes. Trustful, uh, 24 minutes there. Over toward uh, say Clay, about 25 minutes. So uh, it has a long way to go. It is moving fairly quickly now as it continues on that track there off to kind of the east northeast. Uh, it does have the potential here to produce a tornado at this point. Uh, we have not had confirmation of that yet. Uh, our debris tracker is still not showing anything yet, which is good. We don't want to see anything, of course, because that would mean we have a tornado kind of producing some sort of damage there. Uh, but looking at the uh, radar itself, this is hard to tell, but there is kind of a hook kind of right, right into the Porter area there coming on in. Back to the south there, that's just heavy rain for you. Maxine area, Gilmore, Driftwood, you're not in this. But again, there's areas we just mentioned kind of tracking there right through that warning over northern Jefferson County now uh, coming out of Walker County. This is where that storm will continue to track through. So it's going to cross over Interstate 20. It's going to continue moving just south of Summerton. Uh, you can see uh, here we have the Summerton area there. That's where our camera is that you're looking at right now. You can't see much. That's how heavy the rain is coming down at this point. So that storm here, again, has a very interesting look to it. It does have some rotation there with it. We're looking at the different velocity products to give you an idea of what that is. And uh, right now, you've got the red here, which is going your outbound winds, your green going your inbound winds. So you have counterclockwise circulation with this, and that is where our possible tornado would form at this point. So we're seeing rotation to loft. We have strong winds anyway today. Winds have been gusting to 30 to 40. There's gradient winds or winds outside of a thunderstorm. And so with that in mind, we're continuing to track this one. Not to mention, look at all the lightning showing up there as well, too. I'll turn that off. But yeah, definitely going to keep an eye on this one, moving its way about to cross over Interstate 22 in the Palos area over toward uh, Brookside. So definitely, if you're watching us there, you need to be in your safe place right now. Art, Sherry. Dave, thank you. Uh, we are standing by. We've got Pam Palmer, the mayor of Adamsville, on the line as this storm system moves towards that area. That's right, uh, Mayor. Can you tell us what you're seeing in that area right now? Uh, a lot of fast moving clouds. The winds are really high. Um, we've had some small hail over the last few minutes. Um, you know, it's just really nasty out there. It's definitely raining. Well, a lot of people um, have, have said, you know, they made plans earlier to make sure people are not out and about during the system. But this is that time of day where folks are um, trying to get home. Are you seeing traffic or anything like that? We, we have had quite a bit of heavy traffic on Highway 78. We've got some signs again. We're asking people, in, if you're in a, in a mobile home or in a vehicle, go to a safe place. Get out of those mobile homes. And for those of who you are watching as we're talking to Adamsville Mayor Pam Palmer, they're looking at downtown Birmingham as the rain is moving into this area as there is a tornado warning now in Jefferson County. Adamsville is in western Jefferson County. This is near the Pleasant Grove area out there. Uh, um, uh, Mayor, you guys have been through this before. As you talk to your residents there right now, as you're really, this thing is kind of moving in on you guys. What, what do you want to say to, to people who may be listening in your area? Our storm shelter is open. It's open every time we have a watch. It'll be open until 9 p.m. tonight. It's located at 419 Spring Street. Please go to your safe place right now and don't be in a mobile home or in a vehicle. 
Thank you. That's Mayor Pam Palmer, the mayor of Adamsville. Storm shelters open until 9 o'clock tonight at 419 Spring Street. We need to get over to Storm Team Chief Meteorologist Ashley Gann right now for something breaking. Ashley. Yeah, I think right now what we're looking at is the possibility of this tornado dropping down. Again, we don't have ground truth on that just yet, but I am going to treat the next few minutes as if a tornado is on the ground until we get some sort of confirmation. There's just too many of our tools in our toolbox that are pointing me in that direction right now. One of those being that the last couple of scans from our wind velocity product here uh, shows this tightening where these reds and greens are. That's the, the winds that are moving either away or towards the radar site. They're getting closer together and we're starting to see the colors enhance. So there's brighter greens and brighter reds. Uh, that would lead me to believe that there's an actual tornado. So again, I'm going to treat this warning as if there is a tornado on the ground right now. Uh, okay, we'll go over to our shear rate right now. Uh, so this is where we're looking at. Look at this. This is one of the most impressive shear rates I have seen all day, if not in quite a while. This is making that classic S shape. You remember when we talked about anytime it's making this S shape. So between our shear rate products, so this is that extreme wind. So we're we're getting close to this extreme wind, and it's also making this S shape. This makes me very concerned. This is this storm system right now is moving along. Along I-22. If you're in Graysville, if you're in Adamsville, please get to your safe spot immediately. As you just heard over the phone, the concern and the voice. Please get out of a mobile home if you can. Get to a stick-built structure. Get to something much more uh, strong and sturdy. Lightning beginning to pick up here. That will be um, an indicator that this storm system is intensifying. But wow, this is an impressive, impressive scan on one of our again our in-house products. We're looking at the severe wind. Sounds simple enough, but the shapes that these take on the screen are also indicators for us as we are tracking the storm system along with you. This is starting to deepen even just a little bit right. Over Graysville. Uh, this is very intense situation. If you're anywhere from Kilgore down to Graysville along Highway 5 to Adamsville into Dogtown, Brookside, get to your safe spot. Looks like we just got a little uh, little hit ourselves, a little power hit there. All right, so I'm going to collapse the lightning here for you. Let me go back to our radar. I want to look at our debris tracker. See, don't see anything right now, but remember, our debris indicator, it can also lag behind the actual area of rotation because it takes a little while for that stuff to get lofted into the air and that to be picked up by our radar and then that information returned to us. So we'll continue going back to this, toggling back in between that. Uh, but between our shear rate product, look at this. This is the first time I've seen extreme winds. I, I, again, I'm going to treat this as if a tornado is on the ground right now until we get any more information. This is an intense situation from Kilgore to Graysville. Safe spot immediately. Highway uh, Interstate 22, get off the roads. This is very dangerous. This could be a very dangerous situation. We are looking at extreme winds. I rarely see our uh, our legend here get into that yellow category. It did go away with that last scan, but for one scan, it had that extreme wind, and this is uh, traveling right over Interstate 22. That center of circulation will be between Graysville now and Brookside, and uh, folks, you need to take this very seriously. So let me go back to our velocity product. Uh, this is where we're seeing, again, this, this to me looks very... Uh, uh, well, very concerning to, to just put it mildly. So I, this is right over Interstate 22 from Flat Top Road, Bankhead Highway. This is also Highway 5. So Bankhead Highway, where it crosses Interstate 22, right on top of Flat Top Road. This is where that storm is right now. The center of circulation sitting right over Flat Top Road. This is traveling due east. So Cardiff along Brookside, anywhere from uh, Croc Junction and then high, uh, County Road 112. And then this is making its way off to the east. And actually, let's look at these wind speeds. I'm going to put our velocity product over here really quick as we are kind of analyzing this for you in real time. So looking at those greens on your screen. So the, we could be looking at wind speeds uh, anywhere between, say, 50 to 70 miles per hour in some of these spots. Uh, let, me, let me go back and just show you. This is, again, where we're looking at that area of rotation. I'm going to circle this on the screen so you're very well aware. So right over flat top right now, uh, we do have our Summiton Tower Cam. I want to point out this, too. Our last view of our Summiton Tower Cam, we could hardly see anything. I mean, it was not only limited visibility, but no visibility whatsoever. 
river. And that's how intense this rain is. And these are also rain wrapped storms, meaning you're not going to see this classic funnel cloud dropping from the base of a thunderstorm and then it touches down and it's a tornado. That's not going to be visual today. You notice the sky. Look at our summits in Tower Cam. See, it's just a wall of gray. And that's exactly what these storms are going to look like. The only differentiating factor is the howl of the wind as the storm system gets close. By the time you've heard the howl of the wind, it's too late. So we want to make sure that you're getting into your safe place right now. This is not a time to get out and take pictures and, uh, and, and, and try to find the storm. This is not a storm chasing situation, especially with all of this uh, rain wrap storms. Plus, the sun is beginning to set right now, and so that's going to make things very difficult to see. Let me go back to our debris tracker. We are picking up just a little bit of debris, uh, but again, not overly impressive. But with each of these scans, there it is right there, just on exactly where we said, right near Flat Top Road in Interstate 22. That's where this debris is being picked up. But again, a little bit of lag time, so that would go right along with the information that we've been giving you and that's that the storm system likely on the ground I'm treating this as if a tornado is on the ground I want folks to listen closely because even if it's not by the time that it does we want to make sure that you're taking action that you've already taken the action to get into your safe place we don't want any of these situations to be a it was too late all right next up down the line so we're going to walk through this along I-65 Fieldstown, Mount Olive, you, you'll need to go ahead and get into your safe place. Fultondale is on the outskirts of this warning. I'm going to go ahead and tell you to get to your safe place. If you are in Fultondale, if you are in Fulton Springs, anywhere along Highway 31, Interstate 65, get into your safe place. Traveling towards Cunningham, even though I think it's a little further south in that center of circulation, you are going to be inundated with rain and some very strong winds. So it won't be a problem just to hunker down for a little while as the storm system passes. All right, this is still our debris tracker. I wanted to wait just a couple of updates to see if that dot changed colors. We're looking for those yellows and blues, uh, but still that is enough for me to indicate that in fact there was probably a tornado on the ground. So I'm, I'm still going to go with that narrative right now until we get any further information. This velocity product is just far too convincing at this point. We have those winds, the green is the, those winds coming in towards the radar. The red is the winds moving away from the radar. So you've got that couplet. That's what we call it. It is just spinning and it's tightening. And that's what we're looking at right now. So with the tightening of that couplet, uh, folks need to really get in their safe place from Mount Olive all the way up to Morris along Highway 31 and I-65, Cunningham to Croston. Get into your safe place. We're going to move on to Pinson, Bradford, Village Springs, and Palmerdale. You need to be in your safe place. Put as many walls between you and the outside as possible, get to the lowest floor of that structure. If you are in a mobile home, please, I urge you to try to get to a neighbor's house, a stick-built home, even if it's a convenience store, a gas station, make sure that you're in a building that has, uh, that's secured to a foundation, and again, try to follow those proper procedures once there, and get to an interior room of that building. You don't have to have a basement. You just need to get to the lowest floor, and you need to put as many walls between you and the outside as possible. Okay, this is of circulation, this rotation, I should say, is going to move north of Fultondale. Uh, so I will say, Fultondale, you're likely not going to be impacted, but you're going to be dealing with heavy rainfall. Uh, Kimberly, Morris, down towards Cunningham, Croston, Bradford, and Penson all need to be in a safe spot. Even Brentwood and Compton, you're outside of the polygon for now, but that could change. We have been seeing some pretty impressive scans with this Velocity product. Let me go ahead and put our tracker on here for you. And this, again, is as we're tracking the storm, and it's zipping. I mean, we're talking 60 miles per hour. So Mount Olive, it's on top of you. It's going to be making its way on top of you within just a matter of moments. Morris, you've got about four to eight minutes. Palmerdale, about 15 minutes until the storm is on top of you. So, uh, so just be mindful of that as we are continuing to track this particular storm. Now, keep in mind, we're starting to trim off the backside. If you're in Wegra, you are clear now. Adamsville, I would go ahead and stay in your safe spot. Even though that area of rotation is just to your north, if there's a tornado on the ground, it has missed you, Adamsville, and now we're starting to see signs of clearing. So, Adamsville, wait about five minutes before I give you the all clear, but things are starting to quiet down for you there in Adamsville. Area of rotation has now crossed over Interstate 22. It's howling quickly towards I-65 and then Highway 31. We're in northern Jefferson County from Morris, Kimberly, all the way down, uh, really just to the north of Birmingham right now. 
Okay. Just off to the uh, east of uh, Vulcan and Chitopa right now. All right, so let's go back to our debris tracker. So this is where we're, look at that dot on the map. All right, let's zoom in here. Is this the area you're talking about, Dave? For the debris tracker. So this is going to be, uh, this is going to be just to the west of I-65. So that's the scan that we were just looking. So that's just moved east of Chitopa now. And this particular storm, again, as it's making its way across Interstate 22, it is racing quickly towards I-65. Our weather alert unit is on the road safely right now. Uh, but as mentioned before, storm team meteorologist Michael Haynes, they're in West Jefferson County. They've left Walker County, heading back towards Birmingham. They wanted to get out of the way of the most intense part of this storm. That's that's a good call there. Uh, makes me a little bit nervous seeing some of those other vehicles kind of traveling northwest at this point. But um, needless to say, we're kind of heading away from the danger at this point. But you can see how much rain we're dealing with. And we're also talking about this debris signature. So I do want to zoom back in here because as this debris signature shows, we actually, in the last scan, it was a, a yellow dot. Now it's orange. But that would be, again, another indication that this was a tornado that was on the ground. So it could be cycling a little bit right now. And maybe, maybe that last debris indicator um, scan that we were tracking uh, maybe lost a little bit of that. But that does not in any way negate the fact that there was likely a tornado on the ground at some point. I'm, I'm fairly confident of that. So again, I'm going to treat this particular warning as if there is a tornado on the ground simply because of all of the things that we're looking at. I'm going to go back and look at our shear rate because this is something that's still quite impressive. It's still making that signature S on your screen. So you can kind of see from top to bottom how it's making this S shape. As it's making this S shape, that is again one of those features that we look at for rotating storms. I'm going to toss it over to Dave Nussbaum right now. Dave? Well, actually, new tornado warning also now just coming in effect for Tuscaloosa County, now including Tuscaloosa itself. But uh, now here at the five o'clock hour, watching two tornado warnings, one in northern Jefferson County and one right now for parts of central and southern Tuscaloosa County. This one does include Tuscaloosa. Uh, the one in northern Jefferson does not include. Include Birmingham at this point, but we do have, uh, based off debris tracker, a tornado with the one in northern Jefferson County right now. That's the one Ashley was just talking about. Let me kind of zoom in on the one here going on in the parts of southeastern or southwestern Tuscaloosa County right now, basically over toward the Romulus, the Fosters area. That's where we've seen some rotations showing up right now here uh, with the storm itself, giving you an idea what it looks like in the radar. Kind of a messy situation here. A heavy rain coming on in. You can see kind of around the Fosters area. This is just north of 5920. And Highway 11 there. So we're continuing to keep an eye on this one as it moves on in basically paralleling uh, 5920. And it'll continue on that track, though, across potentially here right over Tuscaloosa. So if you're watching us in Tuscaloosa, you need to take shelter immediately right now. The storm is down to your south and west here in our debris tracker. Uh, this is kind of messy here with this situation, but that's kind of the area we're watching here. Let me switch radars and see if our radar out of uh, Mississippi has a little better advantage point. Of what's going on here. Uh, still kind of far enough away, both of these, from uh, getting a good sampling, but it's that storm basically right along near the Foster's area. We are watching closely here for the potential of another tornado to be working its way on in. This one would be working its way right up 5920 and would include over into the Tuscaloosa area at this point. So uh, as we kind of look at our uh, tracker here, we're going to give you an idea. Let me go ahead and put the uh, velocity back on this to give you more of a perspective of what we're talking about. Right over Foster, if you take and uh, watching us out there, that is where our storm is located, moving quickly off to north. These storms moving fast, about 60 miles per hour. Puts it in the Fosters now. Englewood, about seven minutes. Taylorville, there, uh, about seven minutes. Right over Brian Denny Stadium, University Mall. Of course, that is the heart of Tuscaloosa, folks. Uh, nine to ten minutes from now, take shelter immediately. This is a very fast moving storm, heading to Holt about 12 minutes. Fleetwood, 16. Coaling there, about 18 minutes. Right by the Mercedes Benz plant along 5920. 23 minutes there and we'll continue on that track. Again, the storm right now near the Foster's area, uh, potentially a tornado there. You can see here, go ahead and clear this out. Uh, we are looking at a pretty good circulation showing up at this storm here. Uh, so, again, right along 5920 uh, for Grants Creek Road area there, Glover Road, uh, heading back further off along Highway 11. Basically, if you live along Highway 11 there, paralleling over that area, now you can see kind of jumps back a little bit more here, uh, still kind of crossing over. 
Uh, that region. Let me zoom out a little bit to give you a better perspective. Uh, Kings Acres area uh, over toward Inglewood, Brookside, Tuscaloosa itself, all this area. This is where we're watching right in through here. This is our circulation we're keeping an eye on down in Tuscaloosa County. Uh, at this point, I don't have confirmation here of a tornado. Uh, the debris tracker is kind of showing all kinds of messy uh, situation there. Uh, but looking at the shear rate, uh, that's basically where we're watching right in through here. It doesn't have that uh, what we like to see on the radar to say if it's a tornado in S. Shape with it, but definitely very, very strong winds located here at this point. I kind of work its way into the Tuscaloosa area and will continue on that track there uh, as we go forward here. So you can see where our circulation you got the green, you got the red. So uh, red is going out and green going in. The counterclockwise circulation coming from the radar up in Columbus, Mississippi at this point, and it is tracking its way off to the northeast. So this one here uh, is one of the storms we're watching. The other one is across part of northern Jefferson County. Let me go. Go ahead and switch to the Birmingham radar for this one. Uh, that storm here, again, we've been watching. Very impressive looking storm. It's actually had debris with it. It does not show it anymore. That's good news. Uh, but based along I 65, Warrior Kimberly Morris area, though, we're looking at that storm there, Highway 31. This one, not near as intense as it once was. Still showing that circulation going through Mount Olive, about to cross over I 65, Warrior Kimberly Morris area there. Again, Kimberly Morris takes shelter. Same for you, crossed into Bradford area. As the circulation about to move over Morris right now, you're looking live look at Tuscaloosa County there. Uh, but this is the two areas we're watching: one in northern Jefferson County, and one down here on into parts of southwestern Tuscaloosa County. Uh, down here in Tuscaloosa County, let me go ahead and switch to the closer radar there. That makes a difference. The farther away you are from the radar, it's harder to see because the radar beam goes straight out, and so with the curvature of the Earth, that means the beam gets higher, and so you don't want to be too far away from the radar. So this Tuscaloosa is close. Closer to the Columbus radar right now. And so looking at that, we do have that circulation kind of working its way toward Inglewood now, right along Interstate uh, 5920. There is a live look. Uh, look at the heavy, heavy rain coming down right now. You see there over on in toward uh, parts of Tuscaloosa County. Not sure exactly where they are. I don't know if you in the back know where along the interstate they are there. 5920, but what part of 5920 do we know yet? Um, because we'd have that strong circulation kind of working its way right close to Tuscaloosa, Brooksdale area, a Devondale area, Inglewood area. You're all in the path of this possible tornado here. Uh, kind of giving an idea of what we're talking about. There's that circulation again. When you have your greens right next to your reds, the radar off to the north there. So the red is going outbound winds, green inbound winds, and that's where we have our circulation right in through that location there. So this is what the Weather Service and we are also tracking at this point as the storm's kind of moving right now. Looks like it's just uh, south of the 5920 corridor now. And looking at our debris tracker, again, haven't seen anything that's truly like a single individual yellow or blue dot is what we look for, and not this. There's a lot going on out there. We have some strong winds anyway with the storm. Uh, but you see what we have here uh, right into this location, probably some very heavy rain and hail. So we're down to Foster's where we are. So we're behind the storm. That's good. Uh, there's Foster's. So this is where our storm track truck is right now, our photographer. So behind the storm, uh, coming back in behind it, so maybe they can get a better perspective of what this looks like. But you can see incredibly heavy rain falling from Tuscaloosa, Devondale area there, back over toward Brookside with the possibility of even a tornado. Let's go ahead and see if I can get into our Tuscaloosa camera here now and show you what it looks like there. <laughs> you can't see anything. That's how heavy the rain is falling right now. Over on in toward Tuscaloosa. This is, of course, at uh, DCH Hospital right now. Intense, heavy rain is coming down. If there is a tornado here, it looks like it may be moving just south of the city of Tuscaloosa, right along 5920. You're not going to be able to see this. This is how heavy that rain is, and this is north of where that location is going to be. So let me go back over to the radar now and show you that is where the storm is here. Let me kind of move back away. Uh, Tuscaloosa, there you see here, of course, our cameras right. Right about near where the A is there in Tuscaloosa, Storm Rotation Center is just to the south there. Uh, I'll go ahead and look at that. And again, this is where we're talking, right here to the south there of Tuscaloosa. That is where the strongest part of the storm is. Take shelter immediately in this area as we continue to see here again the strong rotation. Still, again, with our debris tracker, it's been very kind of messy with this, uh, Ashley, but we're still watching this very, very closely here down in Tuscaloosa County. And of course, other in northern Jefferson County. Where we did have a tornado based off of what our debris tracker showed us.
Thanks, Dave. And I want to show you just behind you on that radar scan, there was a little dot of black. And so I've actually gotten our 3D product so you can actually see that's a little bit of a hail core. And I was seeing if that was actually reaching the ground. It, in fact, is. So we're likely dealing with some hailstones associated with this, probably on the P size to maybe at the largest nickel sized hail. These are not massive hailstones, but hail nonetheless. And so uh, just be mindful of that. That's going to be north of Inglewood, right along Highway 82 as it turns into McFarland Boulevard and then crossing back over into Cottondale. Some very intense rainfall. And what's interesting to note is the height of these storms all day have not been overly impressive. When you start talking about intense storms, you start talking about tornadoes, it's very common to see these storms start at 30,000 feet, reaching 40, 50,000 feet. These storms are starting at about 10 to 20,000 feet and maybe peaking at about 30,000. So it's kind of faint to see on the screen here, but there's a little yellow line and that's the 30,000 foot mark. And you'll notice that's about as tall as these storms are getting. So not all that tall. And what's interesting to note there is generally the taller the storms, that's when we can also see a better chance of that hail development. So right now what we're looking at is very heavy rainfall over Tuscaloosa down towards Inglewood. Notice this. This is very impressive. This would likely be some hail forming. These are getting a little bit taller. So now we're starting to see these storms get to about 40,000 feet as we move just to the north of Foster's over towards Inglewood. And you can see some very heavy rainfall associated with this and back towards Cottondale. So I'm going to take it off of our 3D product right now so we can get back to some um, radar analysis here because one of the things that I want to point out with this particular uh, area that we're looking at with our radar analysis is the fact that we are going to be tracking um, the potential for, again, um, possibly looking at that tornado here. So let me turn our sweep on where we can see our shear rate because I'm very interested to see uh, that, that wind. So down towards Tuscaloosa, that's where we're seeing some very strong winds right now. I do want to put our Tuscaloosa tower cam on very quickly. Dave pointed this out a moment ago. Look at the limited visibility here. You can't see anything. Again, this is beyond limited. This is, the visibility is pretty much zero. We can, we're hard pressed to even see the glow of the lights here and you can actually did you just see that flash we're starting to get some lightning picking up as well so uh, we have some new information coming and we'll send it over to the weather center now with storm team meteorologist alex puckett alex yeah, i just wanted to talk a little bit about what the radar is looking like here right now we may be getting a situation where we're getting some of the strong winds showing up on the radar that isn't necessarily best co-located with the tornado threat Based on this little appendage here, the biggest threat is going to be from Englewood to Taylorville up to Skyland Boulevard. So once you go back up towards Northport, that tornado threat is a little bit lower. So we're talking about places here like Shelton State, the uh, Wind Dixie over there in Englewood, the Auto Zone and the Tractor Supply, Hillcrest High School. If you live around here, Bear Creek Ace Hardware, you need to be in a safe place right now up to Skyland Boulevard, and then ultimately this is going to continue to lift north and east towards Cottondale. If you remember a long time ago that, that December 2000 tornado, I'm not saying it's going to be like that, but that kind of a track is what we're looking at here. South Tuscaloosa into Cottondale is probably the highest threat for severe weather. Ashley? Breaking news right now. Storm Team meteorologist Michael Haynes and our uh, photojournalists have been driving in western Jefferson County and they've come upon uh, what appears to be an accident there off to the side. You can kind of see the emergency vehicles with their lights flashing there. So we'll get some more information from them right now. Michael, what are you seeing on the scene currently? Go to front, go to front now. So we're looking right now, at Highway 5 uh, blocked here in West Jefferson County. Uh, it appears to be uh, a, a tree down or debris on the road. And on top of that, uh, on I-22, uh, just a few minutes ago, there was an overturned uh, tractor trailer. Uh, that's uh, I-22 uh, westbound. Uh, and I-20, very close to the intersection of, uh, of Interstate uh, 65, getting off of 65, heading back up toward uh, Jasper. Uh, there's an overturned uh, uh, tractor trailer. We don't know if that was caused by uh, damaging straight-lined wind or, six, uh, or strictly a... Uh, a slick roads, but either way, uh, conditions continue to deteriorate here. Uh, we continue to monitor as the sun uh, setting now across uh, central Alabama is still dealing uh, with some, uh, some damage. And we did see some street signs that were blown down just heading back toward uh, Highway 5 along Interstate 22. So we're just kind of beginning to grasp now what's, uh, what's happening here in terms of these storms. But uh, something that I've noticed, uh, Ashley, is that uh, folks are still driving as if it's a normal, clear, crystal clear a day. Uh, we were getting out to, to 
to get a little bit of, uh, of images and some pictures of what's going on. And I mean, uh, tractor trailers absolutely flying by. So we want to urge everyone here. Uh, first off, we have rain on the roads. We have the likelihood of some tornadoes down, and uh, it's not good driving conditions. So please just slow down and stay off the roads until this passes. Conditions will improve over the next couple of hours, but for right now, this is a dangerous situation. Uh, please don't be on the roads and just allow a law enforcement to get out and do their jobs to get things back up and operating. Back to you. Thanks, Michael. I do want to point out that we just had word from our National Weather Service and some of our emergency partners in Tuscaloosa County that there was a funnel cloud spotted over Inglewood Elementary there. That's just to the south of Tuscaloosa. It's where my finger's pointing on your screen, just to the north of Maxwell. So Inglewood Elementary, a funnel cloud was spotted. Not necessarily a tornado on the ground, but a funnel cloud, obviously a first step before we have a tornado. So I want folks to be uh, taking that very seriously right now as we're tracking the storm out of Duncanville. Now, Duncan Bill, you're not in the polygon for this, but anywhere along Highway 6, that turns into McFarland Boulevard. This will be crossing over Highway 6 into Huntland and then making its way over towards 5920 there. Coling, Vance, you're going to be on the southern edge of this polygon, but I would definitely stay weather alert through this. Some strong winds developing from Cottondale, Deepwood up through Lake, Lake Ridge. Brookwood, you're next, and then Lakeview, Kathy Junction. Uh, some of these usual suspects, we, these are names we often hear when we're talking about some of this severe weather. So we want folks to be very mindful of this. And again, if you have to do any traveling on 2059 right now between Tuscaloosa and Birmingham, I would put the brakes on it for just a minute. If you can hold off, that's best case scenario right now because this could be developing into a bit of a dangerous situation, especially if you're on the roads and there's a tornado that's coming. You do not want to intersect that tornado. I assure you of that. Plus the winds right now are pretty pretty intense, and that could easily topple some of these 18-wheelers. So you just want to use an abundance of caution in this situation right now that we're dealing with. All right, let me go back to a couple of our radar products because I do want to analyze the situation just a little bit. Looks like we could be getting a little return on our debris indicator, but I don't know if it's directly associated with that rotation. We're seeing two spots, two dots of green on our map, but as Alex kind of mentioned, there's a lot of wind associated with this right now, so we're picking up a couple of anomalous returns, but uh, we're, we're able to kind of look through that as, as the trained eye here um, as, we're, as we're walking you through it at home, what we're seeing here. Let me go back to Tuscaloosa and then we'll zip back up to northern Jefferson County. So quickly looking at this, uh, this has broadened out just a bit. Still a very good couplet right over Cottondale down towards Eastern Hills. And this is going to be right along that 2059 corridor. And this is stretching back into basically Tuscaloosa. But now Tuscaloosa is on the clearing side of this storm system. But things uh, are starting to evolve a bit from coaling over towards Vance, anywhere along Highway 11, Interstate 2059, and then over towards Kathy Junction, Gray Hill, and Kimbrell. You all need Need to get to your safe spot right now. Let me zoom back out and let's talk about the storm going on in northern Jefferson County right now because we still want to keep our eye on this one. It has definitely started to broaden out a very, very little elements of rotation, not discounting it right now, but it looks much less impressive than maybe about five to ten minutes ago when I was pretty certain that there was a tornado on the ground. So at this point, we're starting to see this situation improve. However, I want to make sure this is actually a live look now in West Jefferson County. Here's some trees down on the road. Um, it looks like maybe some folks are out trying to uh, remove that debris from the roadways right now. So you can see uh, whether this is a combination of straight line winds and or possibly a tornado. So we'll send it. Okay, we're going to go to Alex right now. Yeah, this is a live look right now. We're looking west into this. This is I-20 at Buttermilk Road. You can see the, uh, the, the traffic lights there just swaying. We just saw this wall of water push through here. Uh, we have not got any visual confirmation of anything on the ground, and this camera is going in and out a little bit. So we're going to continue to watch these cameras as that storm continues to push east, as that rotation continues to push east. No confirmation of a tornado here, but uh, again, something that's disconcerting and something that Michael has been noting all day long. We've seen cars driving down Buttermilk Road uh, on this camera as the rotating part of this storm moved in. So if you can hear us on the radio right now, if you're listening to us on Talk 99.5, Please, if you're in Tuscaloosa County, find a place to pull off, 
a, a site built structure and take shelter until this storm gets past. Don't try and outrun this thing in a car. And there's so much rain in this as well. It's going to be hard to see. And we haven't really seen this camera update here in a few minutes, Ashley. So well, I think we lost it. Yeah, well, let's double box it for now if we can. I also know we have our Jefferson County emergency crews are on the scene. There is trees are on the ground. But with that Buttermilk Road, if it's not going to update, that's fine. We don't have to do that. But I have the radar right over Buttermilk Road. So you can actually see I 20 there in the center of your screen intersecting with Buttermilk Road. So there's Butter, Buttermilk Road crossing over Interstate 2059. And that was the image that Alex was just showing you. And that was coming through our weather monitor there in the weather center. That's moving towards Eastern Hills along Interstate 20. So just folks need to be very careful out there. This is our Tuscaloosa. It looks like, uh, is this our weather team? Okay, so this is Severe Weather Studios. This is Vince Walty, and this is uh, images they're getting in Tuscaloosa. These are some of our trained storm spotters, so they are help getting us some of that video back to you right now. But you can just see that wall of water. These are incredibly rain wrapped storms. Some of those visuals, even though we did have someone say that they saw a funnel cloud, I think it's pretty likely that they uh, are, are, you know, pretty lucky that they saw that because most folks are not even. Even seeing some of these things because this is what it looks like. It's just going to go from r rain to wind and a howling, rotating wind at that. And you're not going to be able to tell the difference until it is upon you. This is not something you're going to be able to see coming towards you at this point. So, again, this is a live look from our Tuscaloosa, uh, well, not our tower cam, but a camera in Tuscaloosa from our Severe Weather Studios crew. Uh, that they're, again, watching the storm system closely. So, getting back to our, uh, our, our radar here. What we're going to be tracking for right now, this is that evolving situation in Tuscaloosa. We've got uh, Tuscaloosa County, I should say. So what, what we're looking at currently is that area of rotation. As we zoom out here, I actually think that the back side of this warning has just been trimmed off. So that includes the city of Tuscaloosa. You are no longer in this warning. Tuscaloosa, you're now safe. You're clear. Devondale, you're clear. Inglewood, you're now clear. Let's move into the back side of this warning. This storm system right on top of Holt, Cottondale, Eastern Hills. Even though this is a pretty broad area of circulation and rotation right now, we still want to treat this as if there is a tornado on the ground uh, because we have seen the storm cycle already and we're already seeing. Look at that intensity of rain. I mean, this is a very, um, this is a dangerous situation if you're on the roads. One from the rain, but also from the tornadoes. So I, I don't want folks to let their guard down and think, oh, well, if the tornado's not affecting me, it's no big deal. Because we're talking a dangerous situation on the roads. And with these winds, 50 and 60 miles per hour, we're already seeing those trees can be toppled easily. And likely going to start to hear about some sporadic power outages very shortly with some of these wind and a lot of this rain that we're having outside right now. All right, so let's go back. I want to look at our debris tracker really quick. And uh, again, we are starting to see some potential for some of this debris. Now, some of this could be slightly anomalous, so I want to look in just a little bit further, but um, because this is not exactly lining up with where that area of circulation or rotation would be, but this is a little bit more impressive to me right now, uh, but we still, we're still going to monitor that because it's not lining up directly with where we're looking at that. So let me go back to our storm relative velocity. Um, and, and well, it's close, but it's a little bit ahead of it. A lot of times with the debris, you'll see that debris kind of lag behind. And so it won't necessarily be on top of where that rotation is. But we are still looking at those greens on the screen, the areas of red, and that would indicate winds that are going different directions. The green, uh, Pixels on your screen means those are the winds coming in towards the radar. The red, those are winds that are moving away from the radar right now. Um, all right, let's look. I, I do want to just quickly look at our hail tracker because I did see that very well-defined hail course. So very likely that we're getting hailstones. These hailstones, although you can't tell the size by this, uh, I can kind of estimate by the height of the storms, these are likely somewhere up to nickel-sized hailstones. Um, we did have some reports from our emergency officials out in Tuscaloosa County that there were reports of some nickel size hail. So um, there is confirmation there. But this storm is still producing not only heavy rainfall, but likely pea-sized to nickel-sized hail anywhere from uh, Cottondale over towards Brookwood right now. So uh, just be on the lookout for that as well. All right, storm relative velocity. Let's go back to this really quick. And then I want to zoom out. So this is our Tuscaloosa storm. Let me just hop up to our northern Jefferson County storm because it looks like they are starting to... Um, did they expire that warning? looks like that one has expired. 
Okay, so the only warning that we have right now is in the uh, Tuscaloosa County. So this is heading towards uh, really western, southwestern Jefferson County now um, as we're tracking this. It's moved east of Tuscaloosa. So the city of Tuscaloosa no longer in this threat for uh, the, the tornado pen potential. Let me look at our lightning because one of the things that I'm noticing from our, uh, our weather team out there that's tracking the storm is every once in a while I'm seeing those flickers of light. You just probably saw a little bit of it yourself. And uh, that's because the lightning is picking up, meaning that this storm is still intensifying. There's still a lot of energy in this storm. And that lightning is one of those key indicators that we look at to say, hey, is this storm strengthening or is it weakening? So if it's strengthening, we'll start to see a bit more lightning associated with it. So again, all of these variables are just all um, things that we analyze as we are talking about the severe storm. Now in this last scan, we're starting to see the green kind of push into the red a little bit more, and it's starting to create a little bit of a curvature there. So I, um, I, I still want to treat this as if there is either a funnel cloud, a strong area of rotation, or even a tornado on the ground. And I would like you to treat it as such as well under this tornado warning. So anywhere from Lakeview, Caffey Junction, all the way down to Vance and Coling along Highway 11, along 2059, get into your safe place. This will stretch all the way up to Birchfield. Even though the cities I'm about to name are outside of this warning box. I want you to treat this as if this storm is coming to you. I want you to have enough time to get to your safe place. So along Interstate 2059 from North Johns to Lawson Town, Pinecrest, Bessemer, Lipscomb, Hilltop, along 459 there, I want you to uh, go ahead and get to your safe place. Again, the warning does not include western parts of Hoover. It does not include uh, uh, Ross Bridge. It does not include that yet, but I just want to keep um, you apprised because I want you to be able to take some quick action if need be. Go ahead and start getting that plan in place. The best place to be is prepared so that we're not having to make impulse decisions as these storms are moving. We're giving you plenty of time to make those decisions, especially in western Jefferson County. We're starting to see these storms moving through our most populated parts of our viewing area from Tuscaloosa County into southern Jefferson. Uh, and then on in, and we've already been impacted with northern Jefferson County right now. So that's what we're tracking currently. And um, uh, Dave, are you ready? Do you have some more information over there? To go through, Ashley, uh, watching that same storm you are. This is again our severe wind profile. We're not seeing that uh, unique S shape like we saw in northern Jefferson County earlier. That to us, when we see that show up on this product that we look at, does indicate we likely have a tornado. And in case we did, and you saw shortly thereafter the debris tracker showing debris, that was northern Jefferson County earlier. This one's still our Tuscaloosa tornado warning, by the way, goes in effect until 545. It's 528 right now, our current time. Uh, so we're watching this storm here, but I want to go ahead and show you. Uh, uh, with the, with respect to this, so where it could be going, uh, you can see it's moving from Cottondale area there, kind of just past there, headed over toward eventually the Brookwood area, and heavy rain likely hail for you heading back just north of Coling right here. Uh, you can see there's 5920. Here's Highway 11 through Vance, uh, working its way on in closer closer to Jefferson County. So the warning ends at the right now Tuscaloosa Jefferson County line. Uh, the storm, if it holds together, it continues to show that strong rotation. Would be is actually just alluded to heading its way on into. Parts of western Jefferson County. So, right now, uh, that is not the case with the storm, but kind of zooming out a little bit just to show you where it is in perspective of Birmingham. It's back down here, kind of off to the uh, south uh, east here of Lake Ridge, not too far away from the Brookwood area, though. And again, nowhere in Jefferson County is under a tornado warning yet. Uh, we'll see if the storm continues to hold. Still has a lot of real estate, if you will, to go through parts of uh, far eastern Tuscaloosa County before it gets to uh, Jefferson County. But it is, at least at this point, uh, still showing some of that. Rotation down there, uh, not to quite as impressive as it once did here. This is from the Birmingham radar now. Uh, you can see they're kind of jumping up. New update. There, there's the new tornado warning. Uh, it does now include Birmingham. Actually, no, I take that back. This is a severe thunderstorm warning. It does include Birmingham. A severe thunderstorm warning until 615. So they have not continued the tornado warning, rather made it a severe thunderstorm warning. Uh, again, for Jefferson County, that does go until 615. So they're uh, actually showing that the storm is not going to be quite as intense as it gets here, but it still will produce potentially some damaging winds over 60 miles per hour here. Uh, maybe some large hail with it as well, too. You can see on the radar, uh, we are indicating we see that magenta color here uh, now south of Birchfield area there, not too far away from Lakeview. That's likely hail. I'll throw some lightning on, and yeah, right where the hail is, usually have a ton of lightning, and look at that.
And exactly what we have out there. So north of Brookwood now. So if you're watching us, Tuscaloosa, things are fine there. The storm is past your area now. Uh, light rain falling. Some heavy rain north near Fayette and Barrie. Uh, but this is the storm. Still that tornado warning there. Uh, Tuscaloosa County, that goes till 545. And then here in Jefferson County, it's severe thunderstorm warning until 615. So it does include uh, Jefferson County, the part of northern Shelby County, included in this one as well, too. Uh, back down toward Pelham, not quite to Alabaster, Chelsea. Area included in this, as well as Birmingham, Hoover, uh, back over toward Bessemer, Hueytown, North Johns area, all in that uh, warning, though. But the part of that we were watching here with the tornado warning is still back in Tuscaloosa County. Uh, it looks like right now, most intense part of the storm kind of moving away from where it was the center of circulation, not too far away from the Coaling Cedar Cove area, and just heavy rain and very haily or haily hail conditions up there from East Brookwood back to the Abernot area. That's where we've been watching here, and we see this magenta color and shades. That's where we have seen some of the most intense uh, areas there. Again, the rotation not near as intense as it once was. That is some good news. Still can see some strong winds. Winds. You see there, right, kind of a bullseye. We can see some of those strong winds coming in not too far away, just north of 5920, and continue on that track, kind of just off the southeast of East Brookwood and headed toward the uh, Abernat area there. Let me go ahead and put a little storm track on here just to give you an idea of what we're talking about with this storm. Let me zoom out a little bit and show you uh, where it's likely going to be going here uh, as it kind of works its way there fairly quickly, by the way, uh, at uh, roughly about uh, 60 miles per hour. These storms have been moving fairly quick and kind of just give you an idea as it works its way here kind of off to the north uh, and east, though. Again, Lakeview, about five minutes. Uh, north John's, about nine minutes. Glen Hills, 14. Hueytown, 18. St. Hugh and Bessemer, uh, Brighton, about 19. Helena, about 21 minutes for you. Pleasant Grove, 21. Hoover Met area there. Uh, right across Stadium Trace. We're looking at 22 minutes. Fairfield and Hoover there, 22 to 25. The Hoover proper by the Galleria there along, of course, Interstate 459 and Interstate 65. Now, not necessarily a tornado when it gets on into Jefferson County, but still could produce some very intense winds with this one, Ashley, and obviously some torrential rain coming on down. Yeah, thanks, Dave. All right, here's what we're looking at. So a quick reset. We've got our Storm Team tower cams. Now the sun is setting, so although it is still gray and ominous, it's probably going to add to that with nightfall upon us. We've got our Tuscaloosa camera. This is with our um, severe weather team that they're tracking the storm in Tuscaloosa County. We've got live coverage in Jefferson County from our weather alert unit. Storm is at our, our weather alert unit there in Jefferson County. And we also have our photojournalist there in Tuscaloosa. Sky is gray in Tuscaloosa but the threat is coming to an end in the city of Tuscaloosa. And I think before too long, we're going to start to see those tornado watches being trimmed off of our western counties. And as Dave pointed out, that tornado warning that was for Tuscaloosa County is now a, uh, is, is extended as a severe thunderstorm warning. But let me point this out for folks from Birmingham, Hoover, all the way down into Chelsea and Alabaster. I want to point out that this is still going to be a situation where we could still have this particular storm system ramp back up. And if rotation starts to look a bit more impressive, I would not be surprised if we get an additional tornado warning downstream. So I would like for you to treat this as a tornado warning in the sense of just hunker down in home. It doesn't necessarily mean grab the helmets, the shoes, the whistles, but make sure that you're just inside watching, watching what's going on on your television right now because we want to make sure that in the event that this particular storm recycles or that, that couplet tightens back up, that you're already in a quick place to get to your safe place. So we don't want there to have to be a lot of scrambling, not necessarily a time to say, oh, it's just a severe thunderstorm warning. Let's run to the grocery store real quick. Let's wait for this particular storm system to pass. All right, let me take the lightning off of here really quickly because I do want to go back and kind of look at this broad area of rotation. So as we look at this, this is going to be hugging that at basically the 2059 corridor from Caffey Junction all the way up through Bessemer. It's just slightly north where that area of rotation is. Again, not all that impressive. This is why we're going with a severe thunderstorm warning, but also probably getting some hailstones out of this. The hail along with the winds right now are prompting that severe thunderstorm warning. It's meeting the criteria for that, but we're not really dealing with the tornado, uh, at least on the ground um, anymore. So right now, we're just looking at a big wind event, but keep in mind, severe thunderstorm warnings can still produce a good bit of damage from toppled trees, power lines, so folks just need to be prepared for that. If your power does go out, 
Make sure that you have a way to get those weather warnings. You can always watch us streaming from your app. This is a very good time to download our app because you can actually continue watching us even if your power fails and the TV goes off. You can still watch us streaming on your phone as long as your battery will last. So maybe you've got a rechargeable battery pack that you can plug in there too. All right, let's go back to our reflectivity. Because I do want to show you not only what's going on with our uh, storms right now, so this is a look at uh, where we're tracking that very heavy rain, and this is heading towards North Johns, down towards uh, Lowtown, and then over towards Bessemer, Glen Hills, and Rockdale, right along 459. And this is going to be some very heavy rain starting to pick up along 459, and we have. Um, not only very heavy rain starting to move into western Jefferson County, but this also extends all the way through downtown, basically reaching downtown Birmingham. I have a feeling within about probably the next seven to ten minutes, we're really going to hear that rain here at our TV station. Uh, we're located in downtown Birmingham, so that rain's going to start picking up for us, and that intensity will start increasing. This is going to be uh, a pretty big situation on I-65. We've kind of mentioned that over and over. If you don't have to be out on the roadways right now, probably a Probably a good time just to lay low for just a little while. But let me do just a quick reset on our radar because what I want to show you now is kind of where, where all of this rain is across central Alabama. Currently, that tornado warning is still in effect for the edge of Tuscaloosa County, but I think the bulk of that storm system is now starting to move into Jefferson County at this point. We still have quite a bit of heavy rainfall back behind it, but this back line of rain isn't producing any severe weather. This is just a lot of heavy rainfall right now. Really, where we're looking at any of that severe weather is going to be on that leading edge. And this is actually a look from our severe weather studios. This is 5920 heading towards Vance. And what we're seeing in the sky right now, we're seeing some lowering. We're seeing a little bit, we sometimes we call it scud clouds, and that's lower clouds that condense just below where we would see some areas of rotation. Um, doesn't look overly impressive, but you see that tree line there? It's that tree line right there that also really prevents a lot of visuals. You see how quickly that sky kind of disappears or blends in with that tree line? That's why we tell folks all the time, unless you're a trained storm spotter, this is not a situation to go out and chase. Alabama just simply does not have the terrain for that. We have lots of hills and valleys, and we have lots of trees and lots of pine trees at that that like to act like toothpicks any time that we have uh, storms like this. So any gusty winds can easily snap those pine trees. So that's what we're tracking right now with our um, severe weather studios. <laughs> Excuse me. All right, here's a look at our storm team radar currently. So we've got some of that heavy rainfall. Heavy rainfall now moving into Gadsden, Etowah County, back into Aniana, Blount County, Coleman County. None of that severe at this time. And even as we look at any areas of rotation currently, not really spotting much of that. I'm putting our shear rate product on there. We could be getting some very strong winds, though, from Springville, Aniana, all the way up to Boaz and Sneed. So just be mindful that there's going to be some very gusty winds moving out of, say, Blunt County, moving into northern parts of St. Clair County, on into Etowah County. This is going to be along I-59, anywhere from Springville up through Reese City. And this is just a wind event. So we're still looking at severe winds. We're still strong, okay? But it's on the weaker end. Weak, not my favorite word to put on a legend when we're talking about severe wind. But if that makes sense, it's the weaker end of severe wind. So the winds are still strong. They're just not in that strong to extreme category like we saw earlier this afternoon. So just be, be careful out there. Even though there's not a warning up there yet but, but, um, or, or at all. Not even yet. So, all right, let's go back to Jefferson County because this is where we have an active severe thunderstorm warning right now. And as we have our severe wind tracker on here, these are the winds over North Johns right now. We're still in that very strong category. This is right along 2059, heading towards 459. So this is going to be reaching that Ross Bridge community. This is going to be stretching up through Bessemer, down through Lipscomb right now along Highway 150. Those winds are really going to start picking up. And I want folks to just be mindful that this is going to be a really big wind event, okay? Just because the winds are howling does not mean that it's a tornado, uh, but one way or another, you need to be inside because the winds can still be dangerous, okay? We can still have winds that push over trees, especially those pine trees. They can snap very easily, so we want folks to just be inside and uh, playing it safe right now because this is really starting to make its way closer into Hoover and then again up through Lipscomb, Bessemer, 
and then on into uh, parts of 459. And again, this is uh, along Highway 31. So just folks need to be prepared uh, in, in Hoover. And a warning just went off. All right, so as mentioned before, not a surprise here. We are going to be seeing this as a tornado warning. So you're watching it live on air right now. That's why the severe thunderstorm warning. As I mentioned before, it would not be out of um, the reach of possibility for us to see a tornado warning issued. So right now, if you do live on 459, if you live near the Grove, trace, uh, trace crossings, get to your safe place. If you're anywhere on 150, back towards Ross Bridge, get to your safe place right now. This now includes that 459 I-20 co corridor. Um, this is going to be basically right now, it's going to be um, moving into West Jefferson County. So the portion of the warning for Tuscaloosa County is no longer. That will expire. So folks in Tuscaloosa County not going to be in this threat anymore. This is now moving into Western Jefferson County. And again, as mentioned, if you're on 459, anywhere between the Galleria, that might be a little extreme for now, but go ahead and get to your safe place. But um, anywhere from Highway 31, along Highway 31, I-65, from Hoover, back through Trace Cross, Crossings, uh, Finley Center, if you're near there, get into your safe place. The Hoover Met, uh, want to make sure that you're taking those proper precautions. Hoover High School, if you live near there. And then along 150, back up towards Bessemer, Lipscomb, uh, go ahead and get into your safe place right now. Let me go ahead and put on our storm relative velocity. So this is, again, where we're tracking where those greens and reds come together. You'll get to... I analyze this alongside me right now as we zoom in here. We're seeing this in real time. So this is the reason for that tornado warning issuance. So right over Lawson Town, this is right where we're seeing it. Ridge Road and then Rock Mountain Lake Road. This is heading towards Flintwood and Hickory Grove. Those are both neighborhoods there. And then this is setting right off of Old Tuscaloosa Highway, which parallels 2059 in Western Jefferson County. So this is just past Weller. You're out of this right now. Uh, again, let me let me redraw this for you really quick because I want to draw the track on here for us. So as we're looking at this, all right, let me move this over because I want to zoom this out so that we can actually get a good view of this track currently. So as we're tracking the storm system, uh, this is that area of rotation, likely a tornado. Right now, um, is it still moving at about 60 miles per hour? It is. All right, so we've got it moving. It's moving quick, folks. This is not something that's going to dawdle. But in this last scan, one thing that I noticed is that red is really starting to intensify. So please go ahead and get to your safe place. Here's those areas. You've got five minutes in Bessemer. Hoover met about 10 minutes. The Galleria, 10 to 12 minutes. In Vestavia Hills, 15. Spain Park High School, 17 minutes. With Inverness and the Summit at about 18 minutes. This is going to be moving through a very... Uh, not only heavily populated area, but a heavily trafficked area. I urge significant caution right now to be off the roadways. If you're listening uh, to us on any of our radio partners, uh, Talk 99.5, uh, please pull off onto the road. This area has plenty of places to stop, too. If you need to stop off at a gas station, uh, a grocery store, a uh, convenience store, do so. Try to be off the roads right now. Rainfall is going to really start picking up for you, especially if you're traveling 2059 heading west, you need to make sure that you are getting into your safe place, okay? Uh, we, we just don't want this to, to get dangerous. So, McCalla, go ahead and get to your safe place as well. Let me zoom back into this because I, I want to circle what we're seeing. This is the, the, where that green and that red is. That's where we would likely see the area of rotation. So, that's going to be the tornado. And I'm going to treat this as if a tornado is on the ground, okay? So, I, I want folks to be be mindful of that. This arrow is pointing the direction that it's going. Hoover is on the screen near 65, but also keep in mind, Hoover stretches out over a large portion of 459 and even back down Highway 280. So Hoover is not just that dot on the map. So uh, kind of giving it a, a bit of perspective, kind of knowing where you live. Okay, so let's zoom in. I'm going to zoom in a bit more closely here. This is heading over right over 459, and I think those are the sirens that we actually hear at our TV station. But again, don't, don't depend on them. Don't rely on them. If there's a tornado warning for you and you don't hear the sirens, that's okay. Have multiple ways of getting those weather warnings. Those uh, tornado sirens are simply meant for if you're outside, okay? If you're outside, then that's a way to alert you if you're outside of your home. They were never intended for you to be, uh, to be heard inside of brick structures and uh, stick-built homes, okay? So that in mind, I want you to Focus on where we're seeing these areas on the map. So Rock Mountain, Lake Road, 
towards the community of Hickory Grove. These are all neighborhoods, okay? Eastern Valley and then along 459, Eastern Valley Road, and then over towards Summit Farms. Let's travel down 459 because I want to make sure that folks anywhere along 459 up to 150, Lacey's Chapel, you need to be in your safe place right now up through Bessemer. This includes downtown Bessemer, all right? So if you are in downtown Bessemer, you need to get to your safe place immediately. Um, make sure that you um, are getting to the lowest floor of a building of your home. Put as many walls between you and the outside as possible. And anywhere from Bessemer over towards Lipscomb. And then again on Highway 150 towards Lacey's Chapel. And then all the way back towards Ross Bridge. You need to be getting into your safe place right now. And then backing up towards 459 there. Now, I think the center of circulation is starting to travel kind of due easterly. So towards Eastern Valley. Again, Lacey's Chapel right on Highway 50, and then you've got County Road 52 where it intersects there. Uh, folks need to be careful. Um, it looks like, well, is this a new warning that we have coming out? Uh, so that's still a tornado warning. So folks just need to be reminded that uh, go ahead and get, get to your safe place. Let me zoom back out and make sure this hasn't, it might have been extended. So let's, let me take a look at that really quick. Uh, the warning still goes to uh, 6.30. Uh, for Jefferson Shelby counties, uh, mainly just in Jefferson at this point. Uh, otherwise, tornado watch has been canceled for fate in Winston County, but still watching this very closely as you are on the radar right now. That circulation looks like it's about uh, I 459, 5920. Yep. Uh, inter the intersection of those interstates there. Uh, that means Bessemer right in the path of that. I'd be going over toward the Ross Bridge area as well. Highway 150. It looks like it's about almost there. Yep. Uh, looking at the map here, uh, so this is going to be a potential tornado sirens should be ringing there. They are here uh, over on Red Mountain. Yep. All right. That's exactly what we're looking at, Dave. As you were talking about that, I was zooming into that exact intersection for us, so folks just have a better idea. I will be zooming in a little bit more closely. So if you're not familiar with these roads, um, then that means it really is not impacting you right away. But I do want to point out. This is our storm team, I believe our weather alert unit in Jefferson County right now. Uh, Severe Studios, excuse me. So this is our Severe Studio partners, and they are tracking the storm. So this is in Jefferson County, and it looks like they're on 2059 currently heading from Tuscaloosa County into Jefferson County. So they are following, lagging just behind the storm. So they can see the backside of the storm right here. So I want to make sure that everyone who can see the screen, if you're on Vulcan Road, get to your safe place right now. Nixon Road, County Road 52, down through Hilltop into Pleasant Hill Road into the community of Greenwood, get to your safe place. We're going to take a travel down 459 here, Park Lane. This is Hilltop Road continuing to Parkwood Hills. Get into your safe place. Those are the back roads that lead you up to uh, Highway 150. If you're on 150 down towards 459, you've got Mars Hill there. You've got Trace Crossings. Get into your safe place right now. This uh, tornado warning is effective until 630 this evening for Jefferson Counties, and it also is a Effective for um, northern Shelby counties. We'll get to that timeline in a second, but if you're in northern Shelby County, I would go ahead and get into your safe place right now as you're preparing for this storm. Although it's in western Jefferson County right now, it's moving at 60 miles an hour. It's fast, 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 okay? So, Shelby County, northern Shelby County, go ahead and get into your safe place right now. All right, traveling down 459 just a bit more. We we'll want to make sure that folks anywhere from, uh, say, Timberwood, or excuse me, that's uh, um, Timber Crest, I should say, and Lake Crescent Circle, Grove Boulevard. So now we're getting into the Grove, um, the shopping center there at the Grove. We want to make sure that you're getting into your safe place, and this is right over where the Hoover Met is. So if folks uh, go ahead and get into your safe place there. If you are at the Hoover Met and there's anybody in there, I know hopefully a lot of the, the ball games are canceled this evening and or after school events or any of those ball practices. So hopefully no one's outside or has any plans to be there. Uh, but for any reason, if there are people at the Hoover Met, let's go ahead and get them to a safe spot. There are secure areas within the Hoover Met for that. All right. This is moving quickly, though, towards 150. Again, Mars Hill. This is coming up right on you. This is going to be just to the west of the Galleria there. And then uh, you're going to be seeing this travel really paralleling 459. So crossing over 150. Ross Bridge is right where I'm basically circling there uh, with my hand. So let's, let's go back. And as we're looking at this, I want to analyze something really quick. I want to look at our shear rate again because we are seeing some very strong winds. And as I expected, you see.
see those dark reds on your screen, that would be indicative of some very strong winds right now. And that, that wind is really pushing off to the east. Now, one thing I'm not noticing as prevalent is that S shape. You remember we talked about that throughout the day. This, is, this looks to me like a big wind event, but that in no way should take away from the fact whether it's winds at 70 mile per hour or a rotating tornado, it's all possibly dangerous, okay? Whether you're driving on the roads or whether you're at home, uh, these winds could easily topple those trees and power lines. And I know I've mentioned that before, but I think it, it bears repeating at this point. So we'll send it to Alex. He's in the Weather Center. He's got some new info. Alex? Yeah, Ashley, on the southwest flank of this storm, we're starting to see this wrap up. So this is actually this second circulation that's developing right now near Paradise Lane, Smithson, Loveless Park. This is south of 459. This has started to wrap up a little bit at this point on the uh, south side of this. So we're watching this part of the storm as well uh, as that main part that's prompting the tornado warning. That part now east of Lakeshore Parkway along Highway 150, and that's continuing to lift to the north and east. That's going to be impacting uh, uh, Hoover, uh, Homewood, Vestavia Hills, and River Chase soon uh, as it continues to lift to the north and east. This is a live view right now. This is downtown. Uh, is that correct? Downtown Birmingham? Uh, near City Hall, and the wind here is whipping. This is not the tornadic part of the storm, but this part of the storm that's impacting downtown Birmingham, capable of producing damaging straight line winds. You can see that view right there, and we've got people driving. If you can hear us on the radio right now, you have got to get off the roads and get into a safe place. Find one of these businesses and, and knock on their door and see if you can ride this out for 30 minutes uh, or really less than that in downtown. You've got to get in a safe place. You're under a tornado warning. Uh, and again, this storm with two circulations at this point will circle them. We've got the main circulation right now that is between 459 and Highway 150. Uh, that's east of Bessemer now. A second circulation that is showing up now, though, uh, near McClendon Chapel Road, south of 459, that we're also going to have to watch as well. And you can even see in the reflectivity here, the rain product, you can see that hooking around a little bit there on that backside. So two circulations that we're going to have to monitor closely. No confirmed tornado at the moment, Ashley, but Again, the reason this warning in place, destructive straight line winds and the potential that at any moment this tornado, uh, this storm could drop a tornado. So, Ashley, uh, what are you All seeing right. right now? Yeah, so I'm zooming back into that and actually uh, right where you're talking about, it's very interesting that a lot of these storms that we've seen today have actually produced multiple areas of rotation within basically the same line but just in different spots. So, this one's right over Smithson. This is heading towards Eden Ridge. And uh, as we're looking a little bit more closely, again, this one is the one that's south of 459 at this point. And I'm, I'm just going to put a couple of little uh, trackers on here. So look at these winds, 70, 20 miles per hour. So I mean, we could be looking at, goodness, howling winds there at this point. So folks really need to take this one seriously. This one, we're kind of moving our attention south of 459 towards McClendon Chapel Road. And this is heading over towards Indian Hills and Indian Springs. So this one, if keeping together, will cross through Pelham. So let me kind of walk you through this one really quickly because this one is the one that's really piqued our interest at this point. We don't need to let our guard down. So there's two. Remember, we've got one near 459, near Hoover. That one's moving over the Met, moving towards the Galleria, and then Highway 31. Hearing those claps of thunder here, so lightning is really picking up at our TV station in downtown Birmingham. Our second area of rotation, a little south of 459, and this one is going to be traveling pretty much south of 459, paralleling that. And this one's going to end up in Pelham. So this will be kind of near Highway 119, Indian Springs. You have Valleydale Road. And then this is going to intersect um, Highway 31 and then I-65 there. So we'll need to make sure, uh, hopefully we're on the air. Um, okay, I think we are. All right, we're good. All right, so um, my monitors went black for just a second here. So uh, glad that we're on the air. So we're looking at this storm system for, at 459. So again, two, two spots of where we're seeing that rotation. I want to point out that the one down to the south, although broadened out in the last scan, I don't want to discount it at this point because it looks like it could potentially be gaining a little bit of strength. And with as much lightning that we're seeing, which I do want to put my lightning tracker on here, 
Um, this is where we're seeing a bit more lightning out there. And with that lightning starting, you can actually see those flashes of lightning to our south picking up. And then as we move closer into Birmingham, we can start to see those lightning strikes really starting, the frequency starting to increase just a bit. And this is near downtown Birmingham, right over Homewood. And that's actually where this air, other area of circulation is likely going to be heading right now. Do what? Uh, we've got some hail. Is it hailing here at here the station? Here at the station, yeah. All right. So we do have a metal roof here at the TV station, so we can hear that a little bit. Um, so we can hear the sounds of some hailstones here. I, I, let me put this on really quickly. Let me go back to our reflectivity for just a second because we're likely going to be able to see some of that. Um, this is very heavy rainfall. Actually, look at our, is this Severe Weather Studios video right there from Jefferson County? Oh, this is actually our photojournalist, <coughs> Andrea. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, this is downtown. You can see those sheets of rain just moving across okay. the roads there. Wow, folks, this is intense. This is a very intense situation. Some very, very strong winds, some very heavy rainfall there, and that lightning is starting to intensify. We're hearing those claps of thunder here at the station. We're even hearing some hail at the TV station as well. Uh, so folks just need to, to be careful. Stay out of the elements. Get inside. Find an interior room, get to the lowest floor, and get to a basement if you have it. If you don't have a basement, that's okay. Just get to the lowest floor of a house. You don't want to go up. You want to go down. And then just put as many walls between you and the outside as possible, staying away from those windows. That's very important. So this, again, is a live look from downtown. And you can see how heavy this rain is. When you see that red and the purple on your screen, that would indicate that very intense rainfall. Let me go back to our Velocity product. This is our storm relative velocity. We've seen this wind field kind of expand out a little bit. Even though we're monitoring that southern edge just a bit, it looks like it's lacked a little bit of that rotation. It's broadened out just a bit. I don't see that really tight couplet anymore. That to say, as we've seen with these storms today, that could easily change within a couple of scans. So let's not let our guard down. Let's very much treat this uh, tornado warning as if a tornado is on the ground simply because these tornadoes in, in, in this environment, if we start to see these cycling through again, it could quickly drop a tornado and we want you to already be in your safe place uh, instead of having to scramble to get there. So let's talk about some areas that you need to seek shelter. If you're in Mars Hill, so this is going to be basically trace crossings there and then over towards the Galleria Hoover along Highway 31, Vestavia Hills, all the way through downtown Birmingham, crossing over I-65 and even along 459 to the summit, Mountain Brook, Homewood, get into your safe place right now, and then along Highway 280 from Inverness down towards Lee Branch, so traveling 280 there, and then the Greystone area, get into your safe place, Highland Lake, get into your safe place, so this will be 280 basically just south of Greystone, so it's going to be over the mountain, and then and you're going to have Eagle Point is included in that as well. And this misses Chelsea just by a little bit. But if you're in Chelsea, I would just go ahead and stay inside. Even though you may not be in this warning box, it's still going to be a very rainy night for you and a lot of gusty winds. Look at all of that lightning from our Storm Team Tower Cam. There are actually a, a, um, limited visibility. Is that Andrea still? Um, that, oh, there's our... It's the BJCC camera. That's how intense the, uh, the rain is right now. It's a little hard to even see. We've got, we can see the faint lights there, uh, but usually we have a very clear picture from our BJCC tower cam. Hard to see with all of that rain now moving into downtown. So let me go back to Hoover, something that just uh, piques my interest. This actually just popped up. So this is where we're seeing those greens and reds. This is actually a, a bit concerning to me right now. Um, Alex, is there any chatter on National Weather Service right now about this area uh, on 459 near Lorna Road? So this is going to be moving closer to Vestavia Hills, Lorna Road, Highway 31. And things are about to get very intense here. So this is going to be along Lorna Road. You've got the uh, Walmart Marketplace there. You've got a Chick-fil-A, Party City. Uh, that's, that's right where this storm is heading towards right now. So if you're in any of those areas, you've got quite a few car dealerships. And then the Galleria. So uh, folks need to really kind of hunker down in these spots. Anywhere from the Galleria up Highway 31. And then this is Lorna Road. And then this is going to be dropping you south down towards Indian Hills. So this is Tuscaloosa. This is 415, or Jefferson County, I should say. Um, so 459, that's our, I assume, our weather alert unit uh, that's on 459. 
So, um, so we're looking at that, and you can see all of that lightning off in the distance too. So that's one of those things that we look at, continuing to track that lightning. Even though our lightning tracker's on, we haven't seen quite a bit over this area of circulation. I want to keep this here. I want to go back to our shear rate. So uh, again, that's kind of a fancy terminology for you right now. But basically, where you're seeing these deep maroons on your screen, that is really strong winds. I'm not seeing that S feature that would. Lead me to believe that there's a tornado on the ground, but I do want to treat this as such right now because, regardless, this is a big wind situation right now. We could be talking winds of 80 miles per hour, okay? We're just looking at some of our velocity numbers. Even though those are measured at a couple thousand feet above us, they'll reduce down a little bit at Earth's surface. Um, we could still be talking about significant winds here. Um, easily um, knocking over trees. This is, this is the time when those trees will fall over on roadways. Look at all of that lightning. Right now, off of uh, 459. Wow. So we've got some strong winds from Ivy Glen through Chestnut Ridge, all the way again across Lorna Road. This is Highway 31 as you're making your way towards I 65. You've got Montgomery Highway up towards Vestavia Hills and then all the way down towards um, Indian Valley. So you've got 119 down here, River Chase, and this is going to be along uh, the Cahaba Valley Road. So this will start making its way over into the um, Pelham community. So very strong winds there. Although the winds are going to stay. Just slightly north of Indian Springs, and it looks like the that wind field where it's most intense will stay slightly north of Valleydale Road as it connects 280. This will likely be traveling along 459 towards Acton Road. You've got Briarwood Church, and then onto the summit. So if folks are at the summit right now, I would go ahead and uh, get folks to a safe place at the summit right now. They they don't need to be in the parking lot. Uh, they need to be inside the buildings right now at the summit. So that's important to note. Along 459, this is going to uh, this situation will devolve very quickly as these winds pick up. Again, regardless if they're rotating or not, this is a dangerous situation, especially for an outdoor mall. So if you have anybody that you see outside at the summit, please get them inside of, of those stores right now or the restaurants there. Uh, very important there. And then you've got uh, Cahaba Heights. Go ahead and get to your safe place. Make sure that you're taking proper precautions there, and then back towards Rocky Ridge Road, and then over back into I-65. So now you're starting to get into the Vestavia Hills community, and, and then it'll start moving into Mountain Brook. We're leaving Hoover, kind of traveling along 459 into Vestavia Hills, and on into Mountain Brook. So this shear, this is the wind. This is how how intense those winds are right now that we're tracking. And let me look at back at our storm relative velocity because we're still seeing. I mean, it, it's kind of lining up to be more of a straight. Wind event. I'm not seeing as much of that rotation within these colors, but the colors are still there. So, still a notable couplet, I, I'll say. Um, and, and what was that? Okay, and we'll send it back over. We'll send it over to Dave right now uh, at the big monitor. All right, I have to give you a little break there for a second, but uh, yeah, we're continuing to track uh, this storm as it's working its way uh, through Jefferson County. Right now, the heart of the bigger population area of the county, of course, too. We're talking the Hoover area, heading toward Vestavia, kind of not too far just south of the Birmingham metro area, uh, back over to Cahaba River Estates, Inverness area, and eventually heading further off in toward Double Oak Mountain area, kind of just north of Chelsea. So, this is our big thunderstorm here. The lightning amount has gone down, which is good. So, it did peak up a little bit higher and has come down a little bit. And and so that means the storm kind of got a little stronger. Now it's kind of weaker a little bit. It's not to say it can't pulse up again like it has, but at least at the moment now we're watching the storm. So heavy rain from Moody, uh, Trustful area, Alton, Brookmont area, right back toward Vestavia, through Hoover, Highland Crest, Cahaba Heights, High Point area there, Cahaba Valley estates just to the south of it right now. Still heavy rain back toward Bessemer as well. And that tornado warning still in effect that we have here. This does go until 6:30. Currently it's 6:03 our time right now. And there's that severe thunderstorm. Warning is in effect until 6:15 for those areas not in that tornado warning. Now there is still, as Ashley was talking about, still a little bit of some rotation still showing up right here, Vestavia to Inverness area. So we're still going to watch this here uh, with the red going outbound, green inbound. You have a counterclockwise circulation, and that's why the tornado warning is still persisting across the region. One of the better way to see where the strongest winds are is that shear rate we've been talking about, and it's about to move right over just south of Vestavia there, right along and just immediately south of Interstate 459, about. 
to get right over toward uh, the 280 corridor. So let me kind of zoom in a little bit here, a little tighter for you, and show you uh, what we're talking about. Again, so the Acton area there, Chestnut Ridge, Indian Valley, Heritage Oaks, County Road 29, Valley Dale Road. Uh, it's going to be just kind of along and north of there, north of Indian Springs area. That's where the strongest winds are. Ivy Glen heading right, as Ashley mentioned, to the summit, Asbury Park area, and continuing right over 280, right at that interchange there, uh, the big one where we see a lot of uh, everything going on. Powerful on Grandview camera. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and see if I can pull up the Grandview camera on here. Uh, let's see. Uh, there we go. Uh, right now we have our. This is our Grandview camera. Uh, live look right now. That is that intense part of the storm coming right over top of Grandview, and you can see here can't see much at all at this point. Uh, but this is where that stronger circulation. I was just saying that 280 and 459 interchange. Uh, it can't really see much. If there would be a tornado, it would be in this mess right now of heavy rain and possibly some hail mixed in as well too. Uh, but this is our camera here at the Grandview Hospital. We're looking into right toward 459. Uh, or Highway 280 would be kind of here on the side of the screen there. Uh, so that's kind of what we're looking at uh, to the right side would be 280. I can't even see traffic. Traffic shouldn't be there anyway. At this point, but over for all the restaurants that are right there, all the hotels, the Marriott Hotel, uh, going up all the way in toward the summit. This is what we're talking about at this point, though. So, again, this is our Grandview camera. I can see some of the lights down there at this point, uh, down below. Uh, there looks like here would be. I think, I can't really tell. This might be 280, kind of working its way toward 459 at this point. Uh, but we have reported power flashes there. Uh, could be from a tornado, it could be just from the trees coming down because of the strong winds uh, working its way through the area right now. I haven't seen much. We'll continue to monitor that one for you here uh, and kind of go back here to the radar and show you that same spot. That's where their strongest winds are. Again, this is where our severe wind is. There is that Grandview Hospital, is about right here. Uh, so we're talking about that's where the intense winds are moving. Through that region right now, in Vernus, we're talking about you. Brook Heights eventually coming toward your area, right along Interstate 459 at that point, headed toward past Acton and continuing on its way over toward maybe the Brook Highland area there toward Lee Branch. Let me switch over to the radar right now. You can see a pretty much more intense uh, right now looking, and we still have that circulation going right over that area. So, with that in mind, and the tornado warning in effect there. Uh, we still have it uh, continuing to go here uh, until, again, that tornado warning until 6.30, but that's that circulation right through there. That's where we've seen that continue to work its way through uh, the region there, and I will continue looking at uh, basically here what we're talking about. Uh, there is uh, not seeing any kind of Debris tracker, which is good, not that stuff you see to the south. Don't worry about that. We are looking in that area there, uh, not too far away from uh, the Inverness area. Let me zoom out a little bit and kind of show you a better perspective of what we're talking about. Let me switch back to the radar and show you that's where the intense part of the rain is right there. Here's 459, uh, Highway 280 at this point, Inverness area there. That's where our Grandview camera is. So that's where the kind of the worst part of the storm is and still shows. That circulation kind of working its way right through there at this point. So, as that continues on that track here, real quick before we go to Ashley, let me kind of do a zoom out real quick and kind of give you a storm track of what we're talking about. These storms, again, are moving very quickly here, about 60 miles per hour. So, again, Lee Branch Shopping Center in about a minute, Brook Highland about two minutes, uh, Dunavant area, we're talking about you 11 minutes, uh, Sterrett about 13 minutes, Moody 18 minutes, Pleasant Grove uh, 19 minutes there. So, uh, Ashley, we're continuing to watch this again, very, very Heavy rain and mm -hmm. uh, strong winds, even if there isn't a tornado. Yeah, and, and Dave, thanks uh, so much for that. And what we're looking at right now is our Grandview Tower Cam, kind of looking up towards the summit, and you can see that limited visibility. Our Grandview Tower Cam is sitting on 280 near Inverness right now, and we're going to be continuing to track some heavy rainfall as it crosses over Highway 280 at this time. And we've I've kind of toggled back and forth between some of our tower cams. Uh, unfortunately, with nightfall, it's a little hard to see a whole lot, so we can only visit our storm team tower cams where we actually have uh, a lot of this uh, light that we can see here. Right now, looking kind of double boxed in with me is our, uh, our another camera. This is our severe weather studios camera. This is on 459 near Liberty Park, and this is uh, again the the kind of situations we're seeing on the roadways right now. So we really want folks to to be careful out there. Heavy rainfall at Grandview Hospital there on Highway 280, looking up towards the summit at this time. So we'll go back to our 
um, our radar product. This is our velocity product as we continue to track a relatively broad area of circulation at this point, and it's hugging that 459 corridor crossing over I-65. Significant rainfall associated with this, but it looks like we're starting to, starting to see this tightening, tightening up right over Brook Highlands. So if you are in Brook Highlands right now, you need to go ahead and get to your safe place. Let me go ahead and zoom in here. This is right at Highway 280, and this is going to be Brook Highlands, and this will be heading back towards Cahaba Valley Road, Highway 119, and 119 that takes you up towards Grants Mill. And so, folks, anywhere between Brook Highland right now, this is near the summit, uh, Lake Purdy, go ahead and get to your safe place. And this is kind of a broad area, but this is right over Highway 280 in a very um, Densely populated area near Meadowbrook. This is going to be near Highway 280 and 119. And this is, this again, very, very populated part. This is Inverness, and this is go going down back towards Meadowbrook, over towards Brook Highland, and then up towards Cahaba Valley Road, Highway 119. That's where I'm kind of outlining that on our radar right here. So make sure that you are getting into your safe spot. There are several neighborhoods along this. Greystone, you are included in this. You need to get to your safe place. If you are in Greystone, Stone right now. Go ahead and get to a basement. Get to the lowest floor of your house right now, and that will extend um, uh, anywhere from Greystone even over the mountain back into Highway 41. I would go ahead and get to your safe spot as well. This is going to continue moving off to the northeast. This is zipping. We're talking moving at 50 and 60 miles per hour. A very fast moving system right now. Uh, likely, I want to treat this one like it's a tornado as well. This couplet is definitely tightening up with each scan. We don't have any ground truth on that yet, but things are definitely going to evolve and or devolve very quickly. So we want to make sure that you are in your safe place, that you're going over that preparedness plan. So this is the Brook Highland community moving along Highway 119, and this is going to be tracking off to the north and northeast following Cahaba Valley Road and eventually ending up in Leeds. So folks need to be uh, very, very mindful of this. So this is going to be right over Greystone. You've got Greystone, uh, the neighborhoods, several Greystone neighborhoods here right along Highway 119, back into the Legacy entrance. You need to go ahead and get to your safe spot right now. Continuing down, Cahop. Excuse me, Cahaba Valley Road <clears throat> towards Rex Lake Road. You've got Lake Purdy just on the west side here of Cahaba uh, Valley Road or Highway 119. So you'll need to get to your safe place. And I would even say anywhere back into Liberty Park, get into your safe spot, especially the back side of the neighborhood that backs closer into Grant's Mill area. You'll need to get to your uh, safe place. Uh, Blue Lake Drive, anywhere along Blue Lake Drive, Grant's Mill Road, get into your safe place along Lake Purdy because this storm system is really traveling. Along Highway 119 right now, winds really going to fiercely start picking up here, and then it will make its way into Dunavant Valley. So along Highway 41, uh, over towards Vandiver and Highway 43, get to your safe place. That's Bear Creek Road. You also need to make sure that you're in your safe place anywhere on Dunavant Valley from Highway 280. That will include places like Highland Lakes all the way down to Mount Laurel. Um, make sure that you're getting into your safe spot all the way back into Shoal Creek. You'll need to make sure that you're getting into your safe place as well. Again, this is moving over Brook Highland as we speak. So from Brook Highland to Greystone, traveling over Double Oak Mountain, and then along Highway 41, Dunavant Valley Road to Highway 43, Bear Creek Road, from Vandiver all the way back into um, communities like Mount Laurel, Shoal Creek, and uh, Highland Lakes. You need to go ahead and get to your safe place, get to the lowest floor of your house. We've got some new information. Uh, we'll send it over to Alex in the Weather Center. Alex? Yeah, this is on the ground now. We've got a new okay. debris signature popping up north. Northeast of Brook Highland. And again, the next big town in line here is going to be Leeds. So if you're watching us in Leeds, you need to get in a safe place. This is basically right on Cahaba Valley Road or just east of it. And it's going to ride Cahaba Valley Road northeast all the way back towards Leeds. So this will end up, if it continues on this path, uh, east of some of the uh, the big uh, uh, shops uh, off of I-20 and head more towards downtown Leeds. So Dunavant, Leeds, and even back further west on I-20, back towards the uh, the the Barber's Motorsports uh, Barber, Barber's Motorsports Park, uh, the the Buckies. You need to be in a safe place too, but particularly downtown Leeds, uh, towards the high school, you need to be in a safe place right now. That is on the ground and currently doing damage. Ashley. All right, um, I'll take it from here. This is an area we know very well. 
um, actually, uh, and short of calling out friends' names that I know who live in these spots right here, if you can hear the sound of my voice, I really need you to get to your safe place right now. So anywhere from Greystone, uh, that would include the uh, legacy entrance to Greystone, across Hugh Daniel Drive along Highway 41, anywhere from Mount Laurel to Shoal Creek, Highland Lakes, you need to be in a safe spot immediately. This is moving along Highway 119, Cahaba Valley Road, back into Leeds. So this is also going to be crossing over Rex Lake Road, and that's going to hug Lake Purdy there. Not a whole lot of houses there on Rex Lake Road, but there are several, so those folks need to go ahead and get into their safe spot. Even the backside of Liberty Park, you need to get into your safe spot right now, and this is going to be traveling towards Leeds. Lots of residents right along um, Highway 119 here. We've got several horse farms along Highway 119, basically just outside of Greystone, traveling along. 119 until you reach downtown Leeds. Everyone from Leeds back into Brook Highlands needs to get into their safe place. That includes Dunavant Valley. If you are in Dunavant Valley, anywhere along Highway 41 and then Highway 43 on Dunavant Valley, that's Bear Creek Road, you need to get into your safe place right now. Uh, I want to make sure that everyone is uh, well aware that this is a dangerous situation. It is producing a tornado. We do have confirmation of a tornado on the ground right now. This is heading towards Double Oak Mountain. This will be just outside of um, Eagle, Eagle Point right now, but this will be pretty much north northeast of Highland, uh, uh, Highland Lakes. So it's a large neighborhood. So everyone in Highland Lake, get to your safe place. Traveling up uh, 41 there towards Mount Laurel, get into your safe place, all the way down into Shoal Creek. This particular storm now, the center of circulation is right over Highway 119. Let me go ahead and zoom back in here because we are dealing with, uh, again, confirmed tornado on the ground. This is right over Highway 119. It's over Greystone as we speak along Hugh Daniel. So in between Highway 119 and Hugh Daniel, uh, the intersection of 119 and 280. This is crossing over right now. Uh, you need to get into your safe but uh, there's a Chick-fil-A right there, a couple of gas stations. Folks need to be inside these buildings, uh, making sure that you're safe. So that's going to be traveling just over 280 now. And now we're looking at Grants Mill Road and Rex Lake Road. Uh, those are also some areas that folks need to get into their safe place, put as many walls between you and the outside as possible. And then, again, crossing over uh, Double Oak Mountain, this, this storm system is going to be approaching some spots on uh, 41 there. And then uh, where Hugh Daniel and Dunavant Valley Road intersect, there's a new red light there. So folks need to make sure that they are following these proper precautions. Let me zoom back out uh, very quickly so we can just get a, a quick perspective here. I'm going to turn off our warning so that pink on your screen is going to go away just a little bit so we can see a little bit better here where we're seeing that area of uh, circulation. So this is where the center of that storm is. Let me look at one of our other products. I want to look at two things. One is our shear rate, and we're really starting to see this curvature. We're not seeing a full-on S, but we are definitely seeing a little bit of a curve there. And this latest scan, it jumps quickly because these storms are moving very quickly at about 60 miles per hour, in fact. So some very strong winds being produced right along Highway 119 from basically Brook Highlands area, Greystone, all the way into Leeds right now. And this is going to be making its way through uh, Oaks Crossings here, uh, Oak Crossing, and then, uh, of course, Dunavant. So uh, use, use caution. I also want to look at our debris tracker really quick just to see if there's anything on here. Um, maybe some, something actually back there in Dunavant. So um, this is actually, this, this corresponds with our radar signature. And as mentioned before, anytime we're tracking these uh, debris balls, if you will, they will have a little bit of a lag. So this would go in correlation with the confirmation that there was a tornado on the ground. This debris signature is being picked up right, uh, basically right over Greystone at this point, right off of Cahaba Valley Road, also Highway 119. And this is heading towards this, the town of Dunavant and Oak Crossing right now along Highway 43 as we're tracking this particular storm system um, traveling due east, northeast at this time. You've got Adams Road and then State Route 25, Shoal Ridge Drive. So just uh, folks need to really be on the lookout here. Let me zoom back out so that we can get a, a good idea of where this. So there's that debris signature just off Highway 119. And then as I look here, I want to look back at my shear rate because we are just getting a cluster of wind, okay? We've got some very strong wind along Highway 119. We're also having some wind that's preceding the storm just a bit, so it not, might not be directly associated with that tornado itself. 
we want to make sure that folks are um, you know, following, following all of these. So actually, it's still holding together, this last scan, as I zoomed in. Let me circle this for us real quick. That, that was a, yeah. Yeah. So we'll, we'll look back. Alex, do you have that debris signature up? Yes, I do. Well, we'll hop over to Alex real quick. Yeah, so the debris signature is still very much there at this point. Uh, this is basically on the northwest side of Donovan, and this is going to come right into downtown Leeds. So that's Highway 119. Here's Highway 78, where they intersect there. You've got the Sonic Drive-In. Uh, the, the, the Leeds Elementary School is over here, and this is going to be heading right in that direction. So if you live in downtown Leeds, you need to be in a safe place right now. We have a tornado on the ground doing damage, and it is heading your way uh, right now. So we'll circle that circulation for you right there. Uh, that is right now between or on Dunavant Road and State Highway 119. It's moving right along that track there and heading towards Leeds. So if you're watching us in Leeds, if you're listening to us in Leeds, you have got to get to a safe place. You're not going to be able to see this. It is nighttime, and you see I've moved over to the rain part of the radar here. It's just totally red and orange all around it. It's completely wrapped up in rain. The most experienced storm chaser would not be able to... Um, to, to show you what, uh, what's going on there. There's just no way to see it. So you've got to get in a safe place and, uh, and, and ride this thing out. It's going to be the lowest floor of your home, away from doors and windows. Put as many walls between you and the outside as possible. If you're watching us in a mobile home or a manufactured home, you need to evacuate those and seek a sturdier structure, a site-built structure, and get into an interior room, lowest floor, or if you can, a basement, or even better, a FEMA-approved storm shelter. But actually, obviously, a dangerous situation ongoing right now. Uh, again, Donovan, back into Leeds. This is pushing into the south side of Leeds right now. This is moving into South Leeds, and this is going to move right through the heart of town, near the elementary school, uh, near where 119 crosses with Highway 78. Ashley? So some, some landmarks for us there. And actually, Alex, just as you were tossing it over to me, that scan updated right behind you with that debris signature. I'm going to go back over to that because now we have a blue dot in the center of that. That is a very significant signature anytime we see those greens and blues. So again, that is just reaffirming what we already know to be true, that there's a tornado on the ground. But what this debris indicator could do is also indicate the strength of that tornado because that means there's a lot of debris being lofted, and it takes a strong tornado to do that. All right. This storm system is moving into the south side of Leeds. If you are anywhere from Bucky's to Barber Motorsports, over uh, into the outlet malls, you need to get into your safe place, especially at the outlet malls right now. Please make sure that patrons are inside. Do not let your patrons outside right now to go to their cars. It is safer for them to be in the buildings, and let's ride this storm out in the safety of that site built structure. We do not need to let them go to their cars and try to get out uh, because this storm is coming towards you, and this storm is going to potentially be producing a tornado if it still reaches you. Uh, if you can hear me and you work at Bucky's, uh, make sure that anyone that's outside, go ahead and start getting people inside uh, your establishment. Establishment there at Bucky's. This is important. We need to make sure that everybody is getting to the center part of that store at this time. Um, likely no one really at Mo Barber Motorsports right now. It's closed for business, but kind of generally speaking, Bass Pro Shops over there. Uh, again, make sure patrons are inside your building right now. We don't want to make sure anyone's riding this out in their car. That would not be safe, especially over there where there's lots of trees. Again, confirmation this debris signature is still holding together here as we're tracking this debris signature. This is now making its way into Leeds. So let me look. Uh, let's go back to our radar right now <clears throat> in the city of Leeds. All right, here. Okay, Severe Weather Studios, this is our uh, view. This is I-20 looking towards Leeds. Is that correct? All right, so we're looking towards Leeds, and you can see the traffic there. Uh, makes me wonder if there's an accident, um, probably attributed to the storms. There is a backup on Leeds on I-20 by the 459 interchange due to some accidents. Okay. And that's, of course, is coming right toward that. All right. And we'll try to pull up some of our DOT cameras. I think we have a few over there on that 459 area. But Dave just did confirm there is an accident on I-20 near 459, likely causing these delays and backups. And see, it prevents our uh, severe weather crew from getting there to actually uh, monitor the storms. But let's get back to where we're seeing the likelihood of this tornado right now. So this is going to be moving towards Prescott at this time. So it looks like it'll be just to the east of Leeds. I still want everyone in Leeds though to still stay sheltered okay I want
want you to at least for the next five to ten minutes because we're still noticing um, some er some areas of circulation. Um, St. Clair, yes, so that tornado warning has been extended into St. Clair County. Um, so let's go ahead and put our polygon on here. So this will actually stretch all the way from Wolf Creek back towards Coal City, including Pell City on the northern side of Logan Martin Lake along Interstate 20, I-20 back into Leeds, Moody, and this will be just to the south of Margaret at this point, but I still want folks in Margaret to, to listen closely because, again, this is kind of a quickly evolving situation that we're dealing with on this Thursday evening. The time now is 623. We've had some long form weather coverage since late this afternoon as multiple thunderstorms have produced potentially multiple tornadoes on this Thursday afternoon and now moving into the evening hours. All right, let me zoom back in because where we're looking at these reds and greens on your map, this would indicate where we're seeing the, the likelihood of this rotation at this point. Still seeing some broad circulation over leads, but this is bearing off to the east now. This is going to be traveling right along Interstate 20. So again, as best as you can, stay off the roads. If you're listening to us with any of our radio partners like Talk 99.5, Make sure if you're on a stretch of interstate between Leeds or Moody and, say, Pell City, you need to pull off on the side of the road and or try to get to a convenience store or a gas station if at all possible. We're starting to see the area of circulation broaden out just a little bit, but it's still very evident anywhere between Stewart's Crossroads and Pleasant Grove that we're still dealing with some intense winds for sure. Let me circle this on the map for you because this is where we, where we would be looking for a tornado. I still want to treat the situation as if it is a tornado on the ground, and here's why. This storm has had history of producing a tornado. These storms can cycle. You hear us talking about the storm recycled or it's cycling. That means that it can kind of broaden out, and then that couplet can tighten back up. And if you remember a couple of weeks ago, the tornadoes that moved through Hell County, it was one thunderstorm, but it produced a tornado that lifted and then touched back down multiple times, therefore creating three different separate tracks, basically. That can happen again tonight. So I want in each of these situations for us to treat it as if it is an ongoing uh, tornado on the ground. So that's what we're looking at right there um, across um, portions. Now, this is just moving east of Leeds at this point, but still some strong winds in, uh, as we're tracking this. I want to look at our debris signature really quick to, uh, again, kind of see where things are there. Uh, we're seeing that debris signature right over Leeds. So it just crossed right over where 119 and basically I-20 meet. Um, and then this debris signature is still staying very uh, uh, really holding together on each of these scans. This is making its way towards Prescott. Now, don't focus your attention on the debris signature as to where the center of rotation is or the tornado would be. This debris indicator is showing where things have been lofted into the air and then literally spun through the atmosphere and our radar is picking up on that debris. It's saying, hey, this is erroneous information. This shouldn't be here. Um, and so as we look at this, we say, okay, there is definitely some debris being lofted, which would confirm the tornado, but it can also help us to understand maybe the intensity because the higher this debris is lofted, the more debris there is in the atmosphere. That can change our color scales on our debris map. So uh, looking at this, when we start to get into these greens and blues, we start to travel away from the rain and we start to move into what we consider debris. So uh, larger impacts there um, impeding the radar beam. All right, so that's a, a quick look at that debris signature. It is holding together, and that's one thing that we're looking at. As that continues to hold together, I will continue to uh, treat this as if there is a tornado on the ground. So let's go back here. Uh, again, there's still, it, it's broad. It's definitely broadened out. We're not seeing necessarily the the tightening of this couplet, but we're still going to be dealing with some very intense winds across most of um, the area now as we move into St. Clair County. So let me show you our shear rate because this is something that we're looking at. And again, I look for those kind of S shapes that it takes on. Now, these are kind of two different storms, but we are looking at some very strong winds. We continue to see these dark kind of maroon colors on your screen and these brighter greens, those would all indicate these stronger winds here. Now remember, severe winds, we're talking about, even though it says weak on your legend, it means the weaker end. It just is the lower end of those severe winds. They're still strong. It doesn't mean that the winds are weak. Um, it just simply means that they, they are on the, the weaker side of our severe wind scale. So we could easily be looking at winds upwards of 
uh, 50, 60 miles per hour in some of these places. And we can actually send it over to Alex. He's in our weather center right now with some new information. Alex? I uh, just wanted to pass along. Uh, we've got these tornado warnings, and obviously for folks in Moody, back up to Pell City, you need to be in a safe place in St. Clair County. Uh, but I want to point out as well something that may be something that's going to be impactful as we head through tonight. A flash flood warning now in effect for Jefferson County. Lots of heavy rain continues to fall across all of Jefferson County. Uh, and again, I know we had some accidents a little bit earlier on uh, I-20 near I-459. Very possible that water on the roadway was part of that problem. So if you can avoid driving, uh, in Jefferson County or really across central Alabama this evening, that's your best bet. Uh, but I do want to point out that flash flood warning in effect for Jefferson County, almost the whole county uh, in this polygon. That's going to go until 1215 AM, so right after midnight. Uh, again, the main concern here is, of course, still the tornado warning that we have. That is now pretty much entirely into St. Clair County. The rotation, as Ashley has said, has started to fall apart with this. The original one has, anyway. Uh, the debris still being picked up by radar. What we're probably seeing here is the debris falling back down after the tornado picked it up. Based on what we've got on radar, this may have at least briefly lifted, but there's still some spin here, and that's going to be approaching Pell City. Uh, so if you're watching us anywhere around Moody to Pell City, you need to be in a safe place right now as this storm continues to move on in. So Ashley, flooding threat trending up in Jefferson County, and for the city of Pell City in particular, that tornado threat starting to trend up as well. Thanks, Alex. And to that point, I do want to actually hop over. We have a flood potential that we can look at really quickly. So I want to show you what that rain rate is. Uh, Alex was just showing you. This is why we get these flood warnings, these flash flood warnings, where you see those purples and pinks on your screen. That would indicate where we're seeing intense rainfall at this point. And we could be talking rain rates five to seven inches per hour. So eight inches even. So that's right outside of Prescott. And that is going to cause some flash flooding issues, especially in those lower lying areas. So what does this all mean, the rain rate? Well, simply put, the rain rate is if the rain fell at the intensity that it's falling right now, and it, it did that for an entire hour, this is how much rain would fall in the bucket. Now, the rain won't fall at that intensity for a full hour. The, the rain will let up at some point because these storms are moving, of course, but that's how much rain would fall. So essentially, that's the rate at which this rain is falling from the sky. It makes driving very dangerous. It creates those flash flooding issues. And the reality of it is, is this rain just cannot run off fast enough. So when the rain falls from the sky at that rate of speed, it just literally uh, can't be captured. It, the ground can't absorb it fast enough, and it can't run off into the gutters uh, fast enough. So that's what causes some of the backup in the water, into the streets, and you get some of those flooding, especially in those lower-lying areas. And that's why it's very important to uh, track that. So, all right, that's what we're looking at right now. I'll go ahead and clear that out for us because the next thing that I want to show you is where we could actually be seeing a little bit of that flooding potential as uh, Alex was just talking about. So he was showing us our, our flood totals, and now I want to show you where we could be seeing a little bit of that flood potential. Some of that's right over Highway 41 near the city of Donovan and then back into Hoover, and we did see a little bit of potential of flooding back towards Lipscomb and Bessemer. But all in all, as we mentioned before, because these are such fast-moving storms, we are not seeing as much of a flood potential right now. But look back to our west. Could be dealing with a bit more of a flooding potential back towards Barry, Jasper, and Summerton. Let me do just a quick reset for us because I want to show you on radar kind of what we're seeing area-wide. Okay, a lot of rainfall that we're contending with, and we still have another line of rain. So even though we have the tornado warning for St. Clair County right now, uh, there's still more back behind it, but it's not necessarily creating severe storms. It's just now creating flooding potential, which is another element of this entire narrative tonight of the severe weather. So we've gotten severe thunderstorm warnings. We've had tornado warnings. Now we're de dealing with flash flooding. And leading up to this, remember we kept talking about all types of severe weather were possible with this event. And I think that that is clearly verified for us tonight. And uh, unfortunately, I think that we're going to uh, start getting more and more damage reports uh, through the night. So definitely had visuals of funnel clouds. We've had some reports of uh, tornadoes on the ground. Uh, but right now, 
Here's what we're looking at. So this is a tornado warning. This does include the city of Leeds. Uh, actually, excuse me, the Leeds is just actually, they trimmed off the back side of this. So Leeds, you're no longer in it, but Moody, you are. Prescott, Wolf Creek over towards Pell City. This will be the northern side of Logan Martin Lake over into Lincoln and then up into Emory Blend, Coal City, or excuse me, Emory Bend, uh, Coal City, and then Hardwick. So make sure that if you're in any of these locations that I just named, if you heard me, call out your city that you're going through your preparedness plan, okay? Put as many walls between you and the outside as possible. Stay away from windows and doors. If you have little ones at home, grab helmets. Always be sure to grab those rubber rubber sole, closed-toed shoes. Uh, and also, here's something else we're adding to it. Grab a whistle or a noisemaker because in the event that there's an entrapment, even though you're safe but you can't get out, it's good to have that noisemaker so you can let people know that you're inside and you're safe and they can come get you. All right. Um, right now we're dealing with some very, very heavy rainfall currently from Moody over towards Hardwick and this rain is stretching down into Pell City currently. So right along Highway 411 down from 411 to 231 into Pell City and this is moving towards Embry Bend and then eventually over towards Raglan, Macon and then down into Lincoln. A lot of rainfall, so let me go back and, and kind of Alex and Dave, we've all kind of been talking about these rain wrap storms tonight. Just not a lot of clarity as far as our radar is concerned. Every once in a while, we'll see one of those textbook features like a hook echo, but that's not always the case. So we have to look at a lot of our other products that we have access to so that we can identify where these dangers are, how we can best communicate to you, how to stay safe. So right now, those strongest winds are howling towards Pell City, Pleasant Valley. This is along Highway 231, and you're on the west side of Logan Martin Lake at this point. So pretty much um, making its way towards Logan Martin Lake from Embry Bend down towards Pleasant Valley, Pell City along 231. With the latest information, we're going to send it over to the desk right now with our anchors. Ashley, thank you. We are getting reports and seeing now some of the damage that's out there. Yeah, we want to go to our digital newsroom and Carly Lane. Carly, we understand that you have a number of damage reports to tell us about this evening. Let's get into that. Yeah, that's right. Art and Sherry, we are now starting to get those reports of damage. They've been rolling into our newsroom as these storms make their way across central Alabama. First up, we've got a photo. Check this out. This is as the storm passes through Tuscaloosa. You can kind of see those clouds gathering in the sky there, creating kind of a clear line across this highway here. Again, this is in the Tuscaloosa area. We also saw reports staying there in Tuscaloosa from Northside High School. If we can pop that picture up. This is actually a scoreboard at a football field there at Northside High School. They tweeted this out as storms made their way through the Tuscaloosa area this afternoon. So you can imagine lots of strong uh, winds causing damage in that area. We also saw a lot of lightning over Birmingham. This video capturing some of that uh, lightning here in the Magic City area. You can see the rain blowing along the street there as wind blows and lots of lightning and activity. I've been talking to a lot of people and that's what I've really been hearing is just a lot of rain and a lot of wind. Um, we also saw an overturned truck. You can see that here on your screen. This is an 18-wheeler. This was in the Adamsville area. The Adamsville Facebook page posted this picture. Uh, they said one overturned truck near I-22 near the West Jefferson exit. They also reported another overturned truck near an industrial area there in Adamsville. And we're also hearing out of Adamsville that they are now starting to get reports of injuries. They also have several downed trees and power lines. We do have crews out in the field trying to keep up with all of this and get more pictures and videos for us. Again, if you're seeing anything in your area and you are safe, that's the big key here. Make sure you are safe. Once the storm passes, if you see anything, let us know so we can let our viewers know. But keep that safety in mind. If you're in the middle of a storm at the moment, please heed to the warnings and listen to our meteorologists. Stay in place. But once it passes, if you're starting to see anything, please let us know. You can email that to our newsroom here at CBS42.com. We'll send it back to you guys. Okay, Carly, and remember, there is a flash flood warning for all of us until 1215. Indeed, and we want to keep you abreast of what's happening as our storm team weather, storm team meteorologists continue to track the storm. We want to go get back over to Dave Nussbaum now.
All right, Dart and Sherry, thanks so much. Yeah, again, we've seen the storms coming through. They're continuing to work their way on into Pell City, Pleasant Valley area, Cole City here. So, still looking at some pretty intense winds here. This is our severe wind tracker, uh, what we're looking at. And so, we're going to continue uh, tracking to see uh, what we have out there with these. Let's go back over to the reflectivity here. I'll show you that storm. This is that storm and work its way through St. Clair County. Still has the potential here, again, for uh, some uh, pretty intense winds with it, still, as well as dealing with, again, heavy rain and, yes, even a tornado. So, if you're watching us in Pell City, 231 area there, Interstate 20 corridor. Need to be in your safe place still at this time. Now, it's not looking as impressive looking as it once did, uh, which is good news. But nonetheless, though, we're still looking at uh, the velocity kind of showing uh, again more of a broad, as Ashley was talking about. That means a wider circulation. So it was really tight earlier. That's we had the tornado. Our debris tracker showed it as well, too. Uh, but we're not seeing quite as much of that right now. So uh, still seeing a little bit. That's why we have the tornado warning out there. This is another velocity product looking at the Wind. So, gusty winds right through the Pleasant Valley to Pell City area. This is where we've been watching here to see uh, the system. But again, looking at the, uh, as for the debris tracker here, uh, not seeing that anymore like we did. You saw that pretty bright, the blues and the yellows. And I know our debris thing on here says rain, but really it's just some lighter debris, and the debris would get thicker as you get into the blues there. That's the radar picking up more intense things being lofted into the air. So, if there was what you see here, this may be some of the debris kind of still lingering and working its way back down across the area. So, again, at this point, uh, that's some good news that we don't have to uh, not seeing that tornado anymore. But nonetheless, though, kind of zooming out, that heavy rain threat, yeah, that's going to continue across the area here. And that's going to continue moving on in. Look at this, all the way back here toward the Brentwood area, Kimberly, uh, Cunningham, Center Point, Fultondale. Uh, zooming out even more. Let me go ahead and just take you all the way out at this point. And show you what's going on. Well, it kind of zoomed us all out there for the entire globe. Uh, but nonetheless, though, uh, we are going to look at basically here this showing that uh, right through the Birmingham area where all the lightning is, that's where we do have again some of the most intense uh, right now here with some of that lightning. Uh, I'll go ahead and just kind of see if I can zoom in here uh, as this kind of moves in. If it'll let me do it, well, it's not going to let me do that. But uh, nonetheless, though, still looking at some pretty intense storms kind of working the way on in toward the Birmingham area now. And they're going to continue moving on into the region as they do. Uh, we'll have pretty much heavy rain kind of working its way on in toward our area. So there you see here across Alabama, the back edge of the line kind of working its way through Tuscaloosa, Fayette now, back over toward Coleman. We still have that tornado warning, flash flood warnings still kind of working the way into the uh, Birmingham area now. And as they do so, back toward Springville, some heavy rain falling for you as well. And then going back further over toward, say, Birmingham, Graysville area, back to Tuscaloosa, still some very, very heavy rain with this last band to come through. Not expected to be necessarily Severe. Still can see some gusty winds with it, but also some uh, very heavy rain. And so, watch those streams or creeks. If you live near one, they're likely going to be running really high and potentially also uh, dealing with, again, possibly some minor flooding issues about till midnight, 12 15. That's when the flash flood warning goes in effect. That's here for parts of Jefferson County as well, too. So, again, if you live near areas of water, uh, just be careful. We could see some of that flooding out there. Let's go over to Alex now. A little update there for you. Uh, I think what we now have, and this would be the first time in a while. Let me, let me make sure that we have this, but I believe we have lost our tornado warning. Uh, and if that is the case, that will be the first time in quite a while we will have not had one. Now, we did have what appears to be a significant tornado that went through Leeds. Uh, we do have one damage report. We expect more to trickle in as people sort of go out and assess the damage. Uh, but we do have one report of uh, a tree down on a mobile home uh, in Leeds on Cedar Avenue. Uh, and uh, there could be uh, entrapment there. Uh, and uh, we've got crews heading to Leeds right now to. Uh, let us know what the damage is like there. Obviously, with it being nighttime, we'll really get a good idea of how bad that damage is as we get into first morning light tomorrow. But we are in a good position right now where we still have strong storms ongoing. You can see those here on radar extending all the way up from Lookout Mountain into Cab County, back down to Green Hail and Sumter counties. Big line of nasty storms. But at this point, we do not have. Any severe or tornado warnings in effect, we do have flash flood warnings in effect. And so we'll keep our fingers crossed here, but what we may be doing is transitioning from a tornado threat to a flash flood threat. Ashley? Yeah, thanks, Alex. And I kind of took the words right out of my mouth. We're transitioning, I think, now from that severe weather threat where we're talking severe thunderstorm warnings and tornado warnings to more of a rain event, heavy rainfall. And this is the back edge of this system. We've actually been dealing with 
two rounds or waves of storms today. That initial line is what caused the tornado warnings, those severe thunderstorm warnings, and extremely strong winds. And now this secondary band that's moving through is just a lot of heavy rainfall. When you have that initial line move th move through, it destabilizes or it stabilizes the atmosphere just a bit. And as it stabilizes the atmosphere, you have to have instability to create rotating storms. Okay, but now that we're losing a little bit of that, that's why rotation isn't becoming our concern. But it's the rain that's uh, that's really becoming the concern now. And again, now that night is here, it's going to be a bit harder to see things outside. As Alex mentioned too, we'll start to see a lot more at daybreak tomorrow. Uh, now that night is upon us, but look at all of these flash flood warnings that we're seeing. This one's for Walker County, effective until basically midnight tonight, and then we have this extends all the way over towards Blunt County. Even in Jefferson County, we have a flash flood warning as well. So we're going to be monitoring that closely. All of these extending until midnight tonight. So a lot of heavy rainfall is likely. Uh, avoid the roads if you can, because that's going to be our next biggest problem. Not so much worried about the wind and the tornadoes while you're on the road, but now we're going to be worried about flash flooding on the roadways, and that can also actually be more dangerous. There's more loss of life through lightning strikes and flash flooding than even tornadoes, and sometimes it, it doesn't seem that way. Uh, with the, all the dangers that are attributed to the tornadoes. So now, rain event. Let me show you some flood. Um, these are our three-hour rainfall totals. So right now, as far as the rainfall goes, we have gotten significant rainfall in places like Dora, over two and a half inches, almost three inches, along and basically downtown Birmingham at about three inches of rain near Fayette. We have two inches of rain there near Tuscaloosa, an inch and a half near Samantha, almost three inches up into Aniana, almost two and a half inches of rain. So a lot of rain has fallen in a short amount of time. So here's where our flood potential is right now. So our greatest flood flood potential is in West Alabama currently, where we could be seeing those rain rates of one to three inches of an hour. And rather than the rain rates, I should say, this is just the amount of rain that's fallen. So uh, we're, we're looking very closely at these areas. The, the ones that, are, that you see in green there, that's where we would see the, the greatest potential for that flooding threat. And then where you see those yellow dots, that would be um, some high intensity. We're also seeing some lightning still, so that's something to just make note of uh, this evening. All right, let's look back at our rain rates because right along where this band is, and you're seeing those purples on your screen, that's where we're going to be seeing those very intense rain rates. Let me zoom in and just give you an example of where we're seeing this right now because this is anywhere between six to eight inches of rain per hour. There's almost five and a half inches of rain per hour, and that's just outside of Aniana right now. And then over towards Locust Fort, Kimberly, and outside of Royer, all of that rain just moved through. So I know you can attest to how heavy that rain is and how much of that rain is just falling out of the sky right now. So folks really need to use caution on the roadways. We continue to see our storm team tower cams and, and our, um, our live cameras from our storm chase vehicles and storm trackers right now. You can see a lot of blinking lights on the roadways. We've seen a combination of emergency vehicles and we've also seen those hazard lights on cars. And I'm glad to see that there are several cars that have pulled off on the side of the road. We have noticed that as we've moved through the evening hours. So that's something that um, is actually very good news. Let, let me look at our watches and mornings really quick because uh, what I want to show you right now as we kind of track through the evening hours, um, again, we're, we're kind of, I think, getting out of our tornado threat for the evening. I don't want to say it's zero just yet. I'm not calling the all clear on that just yet. However, uh, with these storms, as fast as they're moving, they're really starting to move out of our viewing area at this time. I want to look at our temperatures and dew points very quickly because this is going to be a story to tell. Right now, those dew points and the air temperature still in the upper 60s uh, for the air temperature, lower 60s for the dew point. So uh, still some instability in the atmosphere. Temperatures right now in Alabaster sitting at 70 degrees. Alex City sitting at 70 as well with those dew points in the mid-60s. Those are favorable for potential storms, but these are not ideal, okay? So now that night is here, temperatures will start falling a bit, but where the rain has passed, have you seen this? The temperatures are dropping. We're at 61 now in Hamilton. Even those dew points are dropping as well. We're now in the upper 50s in Coleman. So you're out of the severe threat at all. No more bad weather for you tonight, Coleman. Double Springs, Hamilton, you are good for the rest of this evening. Your air temperature is dropping and your dew points are dropping at this point. 
I want to show you our future scan. So this will be over the next hour. We have heavy rainfall moving through the Birmingham metro right now. It will be tracking towards Alabaster, over towards Chelsea, Talladega, up through Anniston, up into uh, Center, and then another heavy line of rain from Clanton, and then making its way in towards uh, into Lineville and Roanoke, Wadawi. You'll have some light rain, but that real heavy band of rain will likely be reaching far east Alabama. Closer to about, I would say, maybe nine o'clock tonight. So, in about an hour to two hours, you'll have a little bit more rainfall for you there. Maybe a little less time than that, too, because this storm system is moving at a pretty fast rate of speed. So, good news here our uh, severe weather outlook for today, as we well know, that enhanced risk for northwest Alabama, that's pretty much over for right now. Now we're starting to move into that slight risk and marginal, but remember, just because it's a slight or marginal risk doesn't mean that it's a zero risk, okay? And that's what we're tracking on right now. So just kind of revisiting that. So that's what we'll be watching very closely through the evening hours as we're watching this monitor, uh, or watching our radar very closely. Right now, we'll send it back to Art and Sherry at the desk. All right, Ashley, thanks a lot. Our storm team meteorologists were tracking what appeared to be a tornado on the ground. They were talking about Highway 119 and also out there in Leeds where that Bucky's is. And right now on the phone, we have Mayor David Miller, who's the mayor of Leeds. And what are you hearing right now? Did you guys get damage? Uh, we've had some damage. Uh, we don't have a good handle on exactly the extent of it as yet. We had a tree down on a trailer on uh, Cedar Avenue with one person trapped. Our first responders got there very quickly. Uh, uh, the people that run the trailer are out now and they're okay. Nobody hurt. We have some uh, other trees down in that area plus some uh, power lines down, and uh, so we're notifying the appropriate people there. Well, Mayor Miller, it's good to hear that that person was okay That in that report that you got about that tree down. Take us through the process of how you guys are going through your assessment for damage and also to find out if there have been any injuries in your area. Well, we have uh, naturally the uh, police force and the uh, fire department are out in force uh, canvassing the area. It appeared that the, uh, the tornado went across the uh, uh, south uh, eastern uh, section of Leeds, uh, and so far the only damage re reports we have are from that area. Uh, no casualty reports as yet. Was there an actual sighting of the tornado by the authorities there? Uh, no, just the uh, just the results. We know we know the rain is still coming down uh, for lots of central Alabama. What's your advice to people right now as to prepare for this uh, flash flood? Warning or alerts that we're under until midnight. Well, Leeds, of course, um, has the uh, Little Cahaba uh, River that runs right through the middle of it, and uh, a fair number of low lying areas that uh, tend to flood when we uh, get abnormal rain. And so uh, we're alerting everybody to that, and I'm about to put it out on my Facebook. To avoid certain areas? Right. Uh, most people in Leeds uh, know where those areas are, but uh, we'll run through the drill again and get the word out to as many people as possible. All right, that's Leeds Mayor David Miller. They're still doing the assessment out there. There was a person, one person that was actually trapped, but that person okay, no casualties in the area. Mayor Miller, we're certainly glad that things are going okay at this point as you continue to find out how much damage that you had in the area. Thank you so much for joining us on that call tonight. Also, just kind of checking through some of the accounts on Twitter. I was checking with uh, Tuscaloosa uh, County EMA there. They were saying use caution when, de when driving. Several reports of downed trees and power lines on roadways, including along new watermelon road there. And all of that impacted with the rain that's still falling. We can hear it here. We've heard about the inches per hour that have been falling. And there, again, in Leeds, where maybe Mayor Miller said uh, that area by the Little Cahaba River that they know constantly floods. He'll be putting some updated information for people in that area to avoid that area. But we want to get over to meteorologist Dave Nussbaum uh, with, with these rainfall totals. 
And that's right. Now that uh, the severe weather threats kind of winding down a little bit here, not totally over. Now we're transitioning to that rain. Take a look at some of these rain totals so far. We have just over an inch here in Birmingham, but Adamsville 2.6, Warrior 3.5, Barry about 3.2. As you go over down toward Tuscaloosa, over two inches. So that band of rain as it continues to stretch toward Aniana and Sneed area in Springville, over one to two inches of rain there. This is where some of the flooding, flash flood warnings in effect for that area uh, already continue across those regions. You can see here that goes until. 12:30 uh, this morning uh, into Friday morning, I should say, and then on into Jefferson County here. This goes until 12:15. So we're going to see this rain continue to fall through. And one of the issues we have now, let me go look at the radar now, uh, is that we still have heavy rain moving on through. This band of pretty heavy rain continues to stretch its way from Tuscaloosa all the way through Birmingham, the Hoover area, Springville, back to Gadsden too. And this is going to continue to produce maybe another one to two or three inches of rain. So if you do live near a creek, the Cahaba River, Little Cahaba there, as they we're talking about in Leeds. Uh, just know that they're going to come up. They're probably running high as it is anyway. Uh, we're not talking October. Last October, we got a foot of rain in some parts of Hoover. We're not talking that much rain, but it's been dry for the last two weeks or so, and so we have not had been able to get much rain. This is all going to quickly soak in the first inch, maybe, and then the rest of it's going to run off. And that's indeed what we have going on out there when you have this much rain. So let me zoom out a little bit here and kind of show you just how much more rain we have coming. This is the back edge of it up near the Jasper area, uh, but over the last 30 minutes, you can see that track of heavy rain, some thunder and lightning mixed in as well too. But no tornado warning or severe thunderstorm warnings with it. There is that cooler air Ashley was alluding to behind the system back near Hamilton. Some drier air is moving in, and this will help to basically transition to more of a heavy rain event. As long as this continues on that track to the east here, and it will produce the heavy rain, but it won't last very long, and that's going to help with at least some of the flash flooding concerns. But it's very Intense rain about to come on into Birmingham right now. Let me go ahead and kind of zoom right on into the Birmingham center here. And you can see up near Fultondale, right through the city, back toward Ensley, Pratt City area, Forestdale, Pleasant Grove, uh, Hueyville. Uh, dealing with that heavy rain as well. Huey Town, I should say. Brighton as well. And then heading back toward Homewood, Vestavia, Hoover. Over toward Irondale and back over toward Trustville, you can see all that intense rain. The red you see, nothing severe, just going to be some very, very heavy rain with this as we move forward. And that does track farther down to the south, too. So we'll continue to watch to see this move on in. So now we're kind of that transition from the tornadic and severe thunderstorm type storms back to more of a heavy rain threat. Kind of looking even at the uh, velocity products here, not seeing anything at this point that uh, would uh, be of concern, which is good news. However, the Winds are still going to be pretty strong and pretty gusty out there, and that is going to continue as we move forward here, uh, really throughout the rest of the evening hours. So, heavy rain, and then we're talking about getting on into some gusty winds and then colder temperatures. Tomorrow morning, when I see you on the morning news, we will be dealing with temperatures in the 30s, but with the winds still howling, the wind chill could be in the 20s out there. So, big drop in temperatures versus the mid 70s we had out there for the day today. So, again, we are looking at all of this continuing to work its way through the region here. Again, I'll zoom back out and show you uh, some of the rain out toward Alabaster, Calera. Still fairly light. Clanton as well. You kind of missed all the severe weather down there. So Chicago, Talladega, Alex City. Don't want to forget about all of you, but you can see that line that is going to be moved through your area as we go throughout the next uh, couple of hours here. Should clear the entire area by, say, 11 o'clock to midnight tonight. So we still have about, say, it's 7 o'clock now. Still looking at about another, uh, say, four hours maybe of some of the rain as you go through the viewing area. It'll be ending as it continues to do Fayette back to Hamilton there, Marion County, Winston County, Lamar County. Things are starting to dry off for you. Coleman, some light rain, Jasper as well. Not near as much lightning at all with this line either. And as we look outside again, it's still raining pretty hard here. Here's a BJCC camera right now. Uh, you can see downtown is kind of disappearing with that heavy rain moving on in. Uh, traffic still working its way through downtown, but uh, just keep that in mind if you're trying to travel around the area. Not looking too great there. Let's go ahead and jump over to our Grandview camera. And you can see here again, pretty heavy rain coming on down across the region too. So this is going to be what we're looking at here for the next couple of hours. That rain. So if you do live near a creek or stream, keep an eye on it before you go to bed tonight as it could be coming up pretty high out there. And we could have some maybe some flooding concerns. The Cahaba River itself, it takes, of course, a lot to bring it up. But this would bring it up. It was at 1.9 feet this morning. So over... Uh, 
across the Birmingham area. So we're going to see that obviously coming up a little bit higher here moving on into the rest of tonight. So again, the big thing is just going to be some rain out there. We're not getting any new severe weather warnings. I know tornado warnings popping up at this point. Uh, looks like we just have new flood advisories coming on in uh, across the area too that continue on into a little bit later tonight. Uh, those are continuing to pop up with that line. You can see up there from Fayette to Jasper that new uh, lighter color shading is going on in. That's that flood advisory uh, that goes until again 11:30. They're up in Lamar County, Fayette County as well. Uh, so definitely get ready for more in the way of heavy rain. But once this line moves through Birmingham here in the next say. 20 minutes or so, 30 minutes. Uh, we will see improving weather, just lingering showers. Tuscaloosa, the weather's already improving for you. But again, down to the south, we're talking Alabaster, Pelham area. That's what we're going to be dealing with again. This line as it moves on in and bring you heavy rain. Pelham, Chelsea, Columbiana, we're talking to you. Childersburg, Sylacauga area, back over to parts of Harpersville, uh, back to Alpine, Talladega as well. That rain will be moving on in. Same for you, Lincoln, back toward Aniston. We haven't seen any severe weather today, but you are going to be dealing with some of that. Pretty heavy rain as it continues to move through the region. And again, when it's all said and done, we could pick up two, three, four, maybe five inches of rain in some spots across the area throughout the rest of the evening hours today. So we'll continue to watch all this. We'll continue to see what's going on. Uh, right now, though, let's see what we have going on uh, with respect to severe weather. Ashley, everything seems to be quiet, but. Uh, is it really? We still have any watches out? Yeah, well, we're transitioning, Dave. I think that's a good word to use right now. We still have tornado watches in place, but I want to note that none of those tornado watches have been extended. So the far southeastern corner of our viewing area from Coosa County, Tallapoosa County, not going to see those tornado watches extended. Therefore, I believe that we're starting to transition from a tornado severe weather event from uh, the, in the sense of severe thunderstorms now to more of a flooding event. So we're still going to be plagued with heavy rainfall this evening. There's still going to be a lot of water falling out of the sky, but now we can start to transition that. The good thing about rain is although it can cause flooding, flash flooding, uh, that's mostly for people driving on the roadway. So as long as you're staying off the roads, uh, most of the flash flooding should not impact um, shouldn't impact most folks. Now, that being said, there are several what I would call the usual suspects. If you live in an area that is next to a waterway that is prone to quickly rising water, maybe the water just doesn't run off as fast, uh, those are areas that you will need to be concerned about maybe water getting inside of a building. But otherwise, we are now starting to move from that severe weather situation to more of a flash flooding situation. We've already trimmed off some of those watches on the back side too. You'll notice places like Marion County all the way to Walker County, up through Coleman County, down through Pickens. All of those tornado watches have since expired, but you'll notice those maroon polygons on your map. Those would indicate flash flooding. That means intense rainfall, quickly rising water in some spots. All right, let's go back to our radar now because this is where uh, we can track some of that very heavy rainfall. I'll go ahead and collapse down our watches and warnings just for a moment so we get a little bit better perspective of what we're seeing. And if we put this into play, you can kind of see what's happened over the last 45 minutes to an hour. We had that initial line of thunderstorms that produced the tornadoes and severe thunderstorm warnings earlier tonight. That has pretty much gone away at this point. That back edge of rain has caught up, and those two storms uh, have essentially um, kind of morphed into one, especially in the northeast end from Asheville up through Gadsden. Now that's just a heavy rainfall event up towards Gadsden. And actually, let me see if I can pull up Gadsden on our Storm Team Tower Cam right now because we can get a pretty good idea of how heavy it's raining there in Gadsden. So this is a live look from Rainbow Drive right now. You can see a little bit of activity. You can see that rain really coming down there in Gadsden. We also are double boxed with our Birmingham Tower Cam, and that intensity of rain has really limited that visibility that we're seeing right now. So again, as long as folks are staying off the roadways, it should be um, an okay night from this point forward. Uh, but as we look at some other, uh, some of our other tower cams right now because we've got heavy rain across all of central Alabama. Let's take a look at Summiton. Summiton earlier tonight 
very limited visibility at some points as that main line of rain really moved through. Still dealing with wet weather there in Summerton, but at least you can see a little bit better of a picture of the roadway, the red light, green lights down there, and you can see some of those structures. But notice the lightning off in the distance. So this is our Storm Team Tower Cam in Summerton. It's in Walker County, kind of looking back towards downtown Birmingham. So did you notice uh, our Birmingham Sky Cam kind of lit up about the same time we saw that lightning flash off in the distance there in Summerton? Because uh, it was likely the same flash that we were seeing. So it's kind of a, a neat video. Visual. You kind of saw them in both places, but different perspectives, right? So um, looking at our Tuscaloosa Tower Cam, where heavy rainfall is moving through right now, we are going to continue tracking that wet weather. This uh, storm system is providing not only that severe weather risk from earlier today, but now we're seeing that trailing uh, heavy rainfall in Tuscaloosa. We'll send it to the desk right now with Art and Sherry. Ashley, thank you. You can get the very latest on this storm right now at CBS 42 as we wind down this severe weather coverage. Yeah, make sure you download that app if you have not already done that. We will continue to track the weather as it moves through our area. Stay safe out there if you know we're dealing with flash.